يقاتل المسلمون اليهود فيقتلهم المسلمون فيختبئ اليهود وراء الحجر والشجر فينادي الحجر والشجر قائلا يا مسلم يا عبد الله هذا يهودي خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Hello, welcome everybody. God bless. Thank you for joining in. I hope everybody is doing okay. Welcome Phil Herrera, Abdul Halig, our beloved admins, Zero One, Daily Bread, Miss Piggy, and Ampen, Frau Koilog, Shirley, Peter De Wall, Hillside, Irwin, Donovan, Retna, John, Redmouth, Ahmed, Infidel, Romeo, D'Amelio Sanchez. Wow, I like your name. Shakespeare. Wow, nice to have you here, Shakespeare. How are you, my friend? TM Crosspoles, <clears throat> Malaysian Christian, Joy. Sam King, Zach, Parker, welcome everybody. Uh, I can't mention all of you because there are many of you here. Sorry if I didn't mention your names. We have also our brother Longius of Jerusalem, another beloved admin who are always doing an amazing job. Thank you for joining in, guys. <clears throat> I'm really uh, happy that you're all here. I missed you. I hope everybody is doing okay. I hope you and your families are all healthy. How is everybody? I hope everybody is doing okay. Let us start our today's live show, guys. Before we start, guys, before we start, please pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, so we can be saved and blessed. And hopefully our stream is going to be healthy. Pray with me, guys, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, bless our beloved audience. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for my lovely audience, as always, and subscribers who kept supporting us day in, day out for the last year. Please bless them and bless all of their families and loved ones. Please, God, keep all of us healthy and safe this year, especially from the Corona or Corona virus. And that is really doing a lot of damage, unfortunately. Please save everybody from this disease, especially from the Qur'ana virus. Father, and follow us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength, Lord, so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception, taqiyya, lies, or any doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved as we are saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today. Please, Lord, and bless today's live stream so it can be steady without any buffering. And please loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. As we said on this live broadcast today, we will have the opportunity to investigate how Muslim apologists deceive anyone whenever they can and lie to whoever they can, especially with non-Arabic speaking Christians, atheists, Jews, or whatever kind of person you are. Anything Muslims say today will be used against them and their fake prophet in the court of law. So I hope that these Muslims, especially these Muslim apologists, will have Allah as their attorney present today on today's hearing to defend them in the court of law. So if you like a good spanking today, guys, then you are definitely on the right address. 
Last but not least, guys, last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat. And hopefully we'll have Muslims who will have the courage and the knowledge to call us live. Let us start today's live show, guys. <clears throat> I hope my sound is loud and clear. Guys, can you confirm if my sound is loud and clear? Give me a one in the live chat so we can start the teaching. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. Welcome for the people who just joined. We just started and our topic of today is exposing Muslim tactics. Exposing the lies and deception of Muslim apologists like Ahmad Idad, we're going to mention him today, like Shabir Ali and like the silly, you know, so-called <clears throat> heroes of today like Muhammad Hijab, uh, you know, who are only doing this to sell their products, you know. Black Seed Oil, brother. Use my code and you will get 10% discount, brother. It's definitely not all about the money, right, uh, Muslims? They're not doing this for the money, right? Yeah, I have a sore throat, guys. <clears throat> so I need to drink a lot during the live show. Uh, I took uh, two days rest, uh, you know, to recover a little bit. But I think I'm tr getting better slowly. Maybe you notice, guys, let me... Oh. I made a small mistake. Sorry. Maybe if you noticed, <clears throat> maybe if you noticed, uh, we changed our uh, house style, our you know our background a little bit. I think this is more a personal kind of feeling for me. I uh, put uh, two hours in this. You know, I wanted to create something that is really uh, fitting my style, and you know. When we expose false teaching like Islam, we should definitely have some fun because, you know, the truth that we share should involve also joy. You should enjoy the truth. So this is my style. This is what I do. And I think, uh, you know, don't you like that banana, man? I mean, come on, man. Anybody who's hungry, any Muslim who's hungry. Yeah, this is my kind, you know, I like, I like fun, you know, I like to have fun when I talk about the truth and definitely I have fun when I spank falsehood, right? Banana mama, brother. So yeah, let us start, guys. Welcome. I hope you're ready because I am ready, guys. Are you ready? Oh, you ready? Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome guys, let us start, let us start. Exposing Muslim tactics. Now we know guys that, you know, Allah in Islam is definitely the puppet master and all Muslims are nothing but puppets in his hands. I mean, do you remember the hadith when Adam and uh, Moses were talking to one another and they had an argument argument right and Adam refuted Moses three times according to Muhammad Sahih Hadith brother where Adam is saying why are you blaming me for the sin that Allah put on me 40 years before my creation right last time when we mentioned this Hadith guys I received a comment from a Muslim who said how is this possible Adam and Moses never met. Well, you tell me. Go, don't blame me. Go attack your prophet. Call, go call Muhammad a liar for saying that Adam and Moses met and talked. So, are you saying that your prophet is a liar? <laughs> You're rejecting Sahih Hadith as if it is nothing, brother. You see how easy it is for Muslims to reject Sahih Hadith? Let it go, let it go, guys. What else is new? So Muhammad's Allah, we know it's Muhammad, there's nothing called Allah. He is the, he's the one who is always holding the ropes in their head. He has all the keys, you know, he has all the keys and he's the one who is using Allah as his puppet 
for his own sexual desires and power lust. Now, guys, I wanted to, uh, you know, Muslims often say, you, you, Christian apologists, you can't defend Christianity. You, you never talk about the Bible. Today, we're going to also go to the Bible because we are not afraid to talk about the truth because we have the truth. We are not afraid. <laughs> we are not afraid. You know, yes, my specialty is spanking falsehood, spank spanking Islam, spanking the prophet of Islam. But, uh, you know, we can defend Christianity very well. Don't worry. Guys, Arabic speaking Christians, as you see on the screen, Arabic speaking Christians like me, I'm an Arabic speaking Christian. We call Joshua, we call Jesus, Yesu, the three, you know, we use the three. You know, when we write in, you know, English, Latin letters, as you see, we use the three as uh, Yesu'a uh, al-Masih. You see? Yesu'a al-Masih. So we put uh, the three, you know, when we place comments like on Facebook or on social media, so that Arabic speaking people understand that this three is the is the letter uh. I know it's very difficult to pronounce. But it's the real name of Jesus Christ in Arabic used by Christians is Yesu al Masih, coming from the Aramaic Yeshua, right? Yeshua. So Muslims, who is who is Isa? Who is Isa, man? And Yesu al Masih or Jesus Christ, Yeshu Amshihu in Aramaic, Yeshu Amshihu. Did you catch it, guys? Yeshua Amshihu, Yeshua Al Masih. So Yeshua Al Masih comes directly from the Aramaic, and I, as an Aramaic speaker, confirm. Right? You have an Aramaic speaker with you, guys. Yeah, I know many languages. Yeah, God gave me a gift, and this is why I'm using it, guys. We are all replaceable, guys. We are all replace all the teachers. If is if. There is a teacher or there is a Christian apologist who says I'm not replaceable. He's a liar. He's a deceiver, right? All of us are replaceable. You don't need us. You only need Jesus as we, as I need Jesus. All right, guys. Anyway, so Jesus Christ, Yesu al Masih, Yeshu am Shihu in Aramaic. This name means Jehovah or Javah, the Lord is salvation. Jesus saves. I have, I'm having a call. Just a second, guys. Let's see. Let me open up my Skype and call this guy back because I've had my Skype open on the different PC and when it's tr going through, it doesn't go through this one because I just opened the Skype here as you see. So let me, our sister Hatun sent me a message. Let's see what is, what she said. Our dear sister Hatun from DCCI speaks corner. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see who this guy, who's this guy who just called me? Can I see it? Can you call me back? Whoever just called me, can you call me back again? Because I'm not seeing your call going through this on this PC. So call me back, please. Mr. Khan, I think it was Mr. Khan who just called me. Can you call me again? <clears throat> we didn't even start yet and we are already receiving calls that's funny all right let's see yeah hello 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 welcome you're live on air hello hello um hi hello are you a muslim my friend yes all right what? welcome okay one welcome. question one question i hope it's not a difficult question brother why doesn't the holy spirit know the hour Ah, right, right, right. I remember. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I remember you. Yes. Yes, I, I remember know, you. Yeah, yeah. I remember I you, yeah. Why uh, doesn't the Holy Spirit know the hour? Please. 
Can I go finish? Ahead. Go ahead. Matthew twenty four thirty five says, "Only the Father knows." So why does I said, "Why doesn't the Holy Spirit not Jesus?" D my friend, I have a question before we go there. Okay. No, you have to no, answer. No, no, no. I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Did question. you did you read the Bible or did you go to ahmadida.com? Can you ask, please? No, you're going to answer my question because I asked you this question last time and you failed to answer. Did you go to a biblical website? Did you go to, let's say, I, Bible yes, Hub? Did yes. you go? No, don't lie. Don't lie. I why are you, why your, are you lying? Bible. Yes, it's, it's in your Bible. Are you allowed to lie? The verse is in your Bible. Please say I'm allowed to lie so we can... It's, in your, it's in, your, in your Bible, isn't it? You, you never, listen, we know, you never opened the Bible. Okay, before. answer please. You're, you're did the you, clever one. Before we go, did you go to ahmadida.com to get this question? You're the clever one. No, no, no. Answer no, the I, question. I no, Don't no, be no. a coward. Don't be a coward. I'm going to answer your question. Answer my question. I, did I you go to a Muslim? Guys, he said, I swear I didn't. Right? I didn't, I swear. Don't you always Muslims say, whoever lies about Allah, and swearing because when you swear, you swear to uh, uh, to Allah, right? Are you scared Doesn't, of the question? No, 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 I'm not a scared. I'm going to answer your question. Wait, Abdul. Don't you Muslim always say when you swear and you are putting Allah, right? You just swore on Allah. You are going to end in hellfire when you swear and lie. And we know, you, know you Muslims. Yes. Yeah, you Muslims never go to our web websites. You don't. You don't go to. You know. You always go to Muslim websites. So I gave you the. Reference. So you just got spanked, you liar. But let me ask you a question. Who is the God of the Bible, according to Christians? Answer the question. Huh? I'm going to answer the question. Tell me, according to you and according to Christians, who is the God of the Holy Bible? Listen, I gave you a specific question. I'm not... A... <laughs> Come on, man. Listen, answer the yeah, question. I want to answer your question, but before we go there, who is I according you're, to you... You're, you're trying to... Who die, is according... I'm not... I'm not... Away. Wait, wait, wait. Answer this question. According to you, since you know the Bible better than me, and you want to teach me my, my own Bible, according to you, who is God of the Holy Bible, according to the Old Testament and New Testament, and according to the Christian belief? Go ahead. The God of... Jacob, Isaac, Muhammad. What? Muhammad? Did you yes. say, did you did you just say Muhammad? Okay. Since you no, just ask, mentioned no, Muhammad, no, no, no. Since you just you mentioned Muhammad, the question, I'm going please. to answer the question. I'm not running. I'm here. This is my show. I'm not running. Since you just Muh mentioned Muhammad, God, he said no, God of Abraham. You, believe, you said God of Abraham, Isaac, and Muhammad. That's what you said. Does Muhammad believe that his Allah? Oh my God. Does Muhammad? This guy is does Muhammad? Say, oh, what about you? What about you? No, no, you mentioned Muhammad, and I'm going to use this against you in the court of law. Today, we're uh, using listen, everything just say that Muslims you don't say. know the question. I know the question. I know the question. You Should just, I repeat you, the question? you didn't answer my question, but you, you're now spanking your prophet. You Should said. I repeat the question? No, yeah, you repeat the question. You said, you said, okay. the God of Abraham, I said, Isaac, and Muhammad. Is, listen, listen, does listen your to prophet, question. No, 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 no. Does your prophet believe that Allah is father as Abraham and Isaac believe that their father, so, so that their Lord is father? Go answer the question, please. Can you, can you listen to the question? Do you, do you? Have any evidence that Muhammad called Allah his father? Go ahead. Listen, if you don't want to answer the question, I'll, I'll leave. No, you mentioned Muhammad. I'm going to answer. You may, I'm using what you're saying, my friend. We're having a discussion. Why are you afraid to answer the question? You are spanking yourself. You're spanking your prophet. So basically, the question can is... Can you show me an ayah where Allah is calling himself father? And can you show me one hadith where Muhammad is calling Allah? Allah his father go ahead listen basically your answer is to the Holy Spirit not knowing the hour uh, the where does Allah say I didn't say it. I didn't say that show, is, don't put Abdul listen. you don't know no no listen don't Abdul, know. Abdul Abdul listen don't, don't put know. don't put words in it's my hard. mouth I, I didn't hard. say anything about it yet it's I didn't give you me, my answer yet don't put words in my mouth or I'm going to spank you and your Goodbye. prophet okay bye coward see God of, you see, the God of the Bible according to him. See guys, he just hang up. I didn't kick him out. Okay, don't say you're off Christian, you're muting anybody. He just, he knows, he knows he made a huge mistake. He called God of the Holy Bible, all right? Because we're talking about God of the Holy Bible. He said, this is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Muhammad. Since Abraham, Isaac called their God father, then 
when you mention Muhammad, that means you can show me an ayah from the Quran or any hadith where your prophet is saying, or Allah in the Quran saying that he is father to mankind and he's father of Muhammad. And when Muhammad is saying, I am the son of Allah, or God or Allah is my father, show me. See? Coward. Guys, and I'm going to answer his question about the Bible. He, he didn't want to wait, right? Because, you know, he's feeling the heat. He didn't want to wait for, for me to answer. My friend, our holy God, and I ask you this question, and you didn't want to answer. You didn't even answer my question. Our holy God of the Holy Bible is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Since it is perfect, clear Christian teaching and biblical teaching that God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in perfect communication with one another, perfect harmony, three persons in the Godhead as one God, of course they all now know the hour. When Jesus was in the flesh on earth, he was speaking from the flesh, right? But now, since Jesus extended back to heaven, don't call me, you're an idiot, you hang up, you're a coward, stay and be a coward. Since Jesus went back to the Father, and He's now with the Father, and we have a perfect God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, are you telling me that this perfect God does not share the perfect communication with one another? Is that what you're saying? That's not what the Bible says, my friend. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit work perfectly together. They are in one unity. They are a unity. Right? Even if you go to Deuteronomy 6.4. Lord, Lord, Lord. Echad. Right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Echad. Compound unity. Unity. Right? That's our Trinitarian God in one. All right? Abdul, look at this Abdul. It, Rob, it only says the Father knows. At that time, you donkey, son of a donkey, when Jesus took on a uh, veil and he came as the eternal word of God in the flesh, he was speaking from a body flesh. He had a veil, right? Don't you understand that? But you clearly don't know, right? You go to Ahmadida and you think you know about Christianity. We're going to spank your hero, Ahmadida, that you learned from. I know you're going to Ahmadida.com and we're going to spank him today, right? You're a coward. You already had your chance to so stop calling me. You, nobody forced the sword of Muhammad on your neck to leave. You didn't want to listen to the answer. You didn't answer my question and you spank Muhammad, your prophet, saying and calling him a prophet together with Abraham. But Abraham called his God Father. And you said, it's the same God of the Holy Bible. Allah, which is a false lie. Let me get this uh, call, guys. We didn't actually start yet, and we are getting called. That's nice. That's nice. Let me get this uh, call, guys. Hello? We didn't actually start. Oh, Hello, please mute nice. YouTube, mute YouTube, please mute YouTube. Hello? Hey, hello, sister. Please mute YouTube. I'm hearing myself double. I did, I did now. Okay. Brother, okay. I'm just connecting. Yeah. I'm just connecting with you. And then I had to pack uh, uh, because I had that same voice, yeah. that same guy that always attacks. Yeah. I guess is um he never yeah he never he never calls when we talk about the Quran or hadith or yes. Muhammad he only calls when we're talking about the Bible or Jesus because this guy can't answer just one question about Islam only whenever yes. we pick a topic like today right he's going to yes. to call and try to refute Christianity and the Bible when he goes to ahmadidad.com to zakarnak.com these people have no guts they have no honor no dignity and no shame Right. Go ahead, sister. The attack of the Antichrist, brother. Yeah. yeah but yes. suspect, yeah. Uh, he quoted a passage from the Bible, and the passage would be, 
if Jesus was God, why wouldn't he know when the hour would come, right? Yes. I suspect that is what he wanted to know. Now, he, he, asked, he, he, he asked a very specific question, sister. I, I listened carefully. He said, why? He didn't ask about Jesus. He said, why the Holy Spirit doesn't know the hour? That's what he said. Well, the passage that you got from Ahmed Didat or some other Islamic yeah. Yeah. website only quoted one. I wish you could open that passage, brother. I wish you yes. could open that. Go uh, ahead. Because the same question was asked uh, to um, Christian Prince. Yes. And Christian Prince made the person go th through everything. The same place where it says um, nobody knows the hour. Yeah. Only God, the same passage says, when this happens, when this happens, when this happens, then know that the end is near. The same Jesus is telling us mm -hmm. that you are going to bring the end. If you go so low, degenerate so low, when this happens, when yeah. this happens, when this happens, yeah. then know that the end is near. Yeah. So the same Jesus that says, Nobody knows the hour, not even the son, but the father. Yeah. The same Jesus says in the same passage that the hour will come when all these signs happen. Yes. So Christian Prince has already answered that question. But the spirit of Antichrist is always attacking anyways. Right? Yeah. So I'm connected with you, brother. I'm sorry for, for interrupting. I know you do not want Christians to call during, uh, at the beginning. But I'm connected now, and mm -hmm. I'm praying for you, brother. God will thank, be your thank you. Thank you, sister. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat> thank you for the call. Guys, uh, try not to call me if you are a Christian. Uh, try not to call me when we are not done teaching. We will allow you as Christians to call, but when we finish our today's teaching and the live Q&A starts, so the live question and answer session starts after the show immediately we will allow christians to call okay so thank you for the sister to call us and you know add her uh, very interesting point to this topic and that's actually not my topic today you know my topic is refuting and exposing muslim apologists what is the holy spirit not knowing the hour what to do with this anyway it is what it is guys it is what it is now, guys, let me continue, please. Did I finish my last one? Okay. Yeah, so, guys, before this Muslim who has no idea about Islam, who always love to call us when we are talking about the Bible or Jesus, I want to ask him, who is Isa? No Christian before Islam heard of the name Isa before. And can you show me the word the Lord or Javeh in the name Isa? Since you claim it's Isa, since you claim that Yeshua, the Arabic name of Jesus, the real Arabic name, Yeshua al-Masih, not Isa, there's no Isa. Since you claim it's the same person, can you show me, can you show me in the name Isa where we can find Javeh? Because we can find it in Yeshua. We can find it in Joshua, yeah, the yeah means Yahweh. You see, the yeah means Jehovah, Yahweh. So, who is Isa? Do we say the name of God in that per in that person's name? No. So, who is Isa? I have no idea. Maybe Muslims can answer this question since you claim it's the same person. Right? Who is Isa? Allahu alam. Allah knows best would be the best answer, right? So guys, let us continue. Now, please, Christians, I've seen many Christians in comment sections on under many, many YouTube videos who claim that Allah means the God. I've seen Christians with my own eyes saying and claiming that Allah means the God, which is a lie. You Christians who make that claim, you have no idea what you're talking about. Stop. You're not helping. All right. You are not helping anyone with that. Learn. 
Guys, take a screenshot and share this with everybody you know. Right? And I'm going to explain this screenshot for you that I made. I made this uh, text for you so you, have, you will have an idea. Finally, you have, will have an idea what the difference is between Allah, Ilah, Elohim, El, Allahu, Allah. Okay? So guys, pay attention. Okay? Focus. Take your pens out. Focus. I'm going to explain it again. We have explained this many times. But still, for some reason, Christians are not paying attention. Pay attention, guys, when we explain things to you. Ilah is the Arabic word for God. Ilah. Elohim is the Hebrew word for God. El is also a Hebrew word for God. Like Jibrael, Mikael, right? Aloha is an Aramaic word. Alaha is also Aramaic word, but in a different dialect, right? Depends on what dialect you speak. I speak the Western dialect. I say for God, I say Aloha. Aloha and Allaha are not Allah, okay? Just the same as Ilah, Elohim, El, right? These are just the generic word God, right? Just the meaning of God, right? Like El, Elohim, Ilah in Arabic. This is the Arabic word. Now pay attention to the Arabic word. Ilahi, Elahi, right? Eloheinu means my God. Ilahi, Arabic. Elahi, Aramaic. Eloheinu, Hebrew. My God. Still the same word. My God, right? God. Notice, guys, notice, and this is the most important part. Notice. Take notes. Notice. Ilah means God, not Allah. So when Muslims, whenever you see a Muslim says, Allah means the God, that's a lie. Allah does not mean the God. Don't fall for their trap, guys. They are lying and deceiving to you. No Muslim Abdullah, Allah is not God. You liar. You, you have no shame. You have no dignity. You are lying. The proof is in front of you. Allah does not mean God. Ilah means God. You don't know Arabic. I think you're a Pakistani. You have no idea about Arabic. Because Ilah means God. You are not paying attention. Pay attention, you potato. Right? You are acting like a fool. I'm treating you like a fool, right? That's what my Bible in Proverbs commands me to do. When you are acting like an idiot and a fool, I'm going to treat you like a fool and an idiot. Potato. That's what you are. You're not paying attention. Again, guys, again. Ilah means God. Allah is the name of the Islamic God. Allah is a name like Jehovah, right? Jehovah is the name of our holy God of the Bible. And that's his name forever and ever. Exodus 3 verse 15. My name is Jehovah. And that's going to be my name forever and ever, said God to Moses. When he sent him to save the Israelites from the Egyptian bondage. Right? Born again. I know you're a Muslim. You said... Jehovah is not God. Jehovah is not God? But your Allah claims to be the same God of the Bible. Are you calling Allah a liar now? Allah sent, guys, look, look at this comedy, guys. Allah, according to him in the Quran, he sent the Torah, right, as divine revelation, and he sent the Injil, the gospel, as divine revelation. Allah, for some reason, decides <laughs> to change his mind and call himself from that moment that Muhammad starts to get so-called divine revelation, he calls himself Allah. I mean, if you, as a prophet in Islam, Muhammad, claiming that you are the same prophet of the same God, you know, you are the last prophet, like the other prophets 
of the same God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That means when you call your God Allah, that means your Allah changed his mind. And it's actually an insult because our God in Exodus 3.15 says, this is my name and I will never change my name. So born again, you have no idea what you're talking about. And I challenge you to call me and refute me. Okay, guys, she just challenged me. I know she's a lady, born again, I think she's a lady. She challenged me to show her. Oh boy, oh boy. She challenged me to show her. This is going to be fun, guys. This is going to be fun. All right. A second, guys, okay? A second. I hope I can find uh, what I'm looking for, guys. Mm, I think I found it. Bear with me, guys, okay? Bear with me, please. <clears throat> Let's see if... Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the right translation. This is Exodus 3.15, okay? Okay, I think this is just a second. Where did I put that one? Let me go. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let us go to Bible Gateway. All right. And let me try to get the translation that is actually let's see all right i think i found it born again can you read what it says here can you read what it says here with me Exodus 3.15, God said moreover to Moses, you shall tell the children of Israel this, Javeh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. What is their name? Javeh. So can you call me, open up your cam, your webcam and spank your behind? Can you remove your pants and spank your behind so everybody can laugh at you? Huh? Can you do that for us, please? Born again, I challenge you, since you got spanked and you lied about our holy God, may God rebuke you, evil son of Satan, you evil agent of Satan. If you have any honor in you, call me right now, we are live. Call me and open up your webcam, drop your pants and start to spank yourself, your own behind for everybody to see. Because you got spanked and you got served and barbecued for everybody to see. You have no honor, you have no shame and you just insulted our holy living God. Are you calling my God a liar? When he said my name is Javeh, Jehovah, this is my name forever. So is Allah. Are you saying that Allah changed his mind like a kid in a candy store from Jehovah to... Stop calling me, you had your chance, Mr. Khan. Ahmad Khan, you had your chance, you're a coward, it's over. Alright? Stop calling me. Do we have uh, actually real Christian, ap or sorry, Muslim apologist? We have only kids who cannot defend what they say. Only kids are calling me today, it seems. So let me go back. We spanked them. Already two Muslims today. 
One said, Allah means the God. No, it doesn't mean that. Because what are you going to do with the eye, right? Guys, since Muslims claim, pay attention. Guys, let me go back to my original teaching. Since Muslims claim that Allah means the God, what are you going to do with the eye? Are you going to eat it? Where are, where are you going to put the eye? Because when you say it's, when, when you say Allah means the God, what are you going to do with the leather eye? Are you going to eat it, swallow it, digest it? Guys, Muslims claim, pay attention, Muslims claim that Allah means the God, right? That's what they claim, not us. That's what they said. What are you going to do with the eye in ilah? Because this is the Arabic word for God. What are you going to do with the eye here? This eye, are you going to remove it? Like here. And still claim that it means the God? Are you going to ignore? Are you like our brother Andrew Martin in the chat is saying, are you going to ignore the letter I? Just remove it because you can. <clears throat> huh? But be only because you can. Are you going to eat the eye, guys? Uh, Muslims, I'm talking to you. Are you going to eat the eye and then put L in front? <laughs> you see how the Muslim logic, guys? Muslim Abdullah says, I never heard Al Ilah as the God. Well, you are a non Arabic speaking victim. I think you are a Pakistani. You 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 don't hear a lot. You only you know you only go to your uh, imams and they teach you about Islam and you think you know about Islam. That's what happens when you are a victim of an Arabic cult when you don't speak the, this language. You don't know Arabic. You're trying to refute an Arabic speaker like me. You have no idea what you're talking about. No, you are not Arabic. You're you're Arabic, but you never heard of uh, of Al Ilah before. <laughs> you liar. Okay, call me and talk Arabic to me, right? Maslam Abdullah. اتصل في وتكلم عربي معي. اتكلم العربية. Okay, I challenge you. Call me. Let and let us laugh. Okay, he's calling me. Let, let us talk Arabic. Hello? Hello, 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 Ahmed Khan. What is your name? What is your name? Okay, talk Arabic. Talk Arabic. No, 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 talk Arabic. Talk Arabic. Mean in the Minwain 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 Okay, answer the question. My Okay, you coward. Coward? You don't know Arabic, you liar. My He knows one small sentence and he claims to know Arabic. You liar, you are deceiver like your maker Allah, the best of all deceiver. Khairul makirin Allah. Your God is the best of deceivers. This is why you are a liar and deceiver like your Allah. Donkey. I know Arabic. Yeah, you know Arabic. You can't even talk Arabic. Everybody can memorize one sentence and claim to be Arabic speaker, right? أنت ما بتتكلم العربية يا أخي. يكفي الجذب. خلي الجذب عندك. Okay. يا جذاب ابن جذاب. Yeah, Gizab ibn Gizab. That's what you are. Your Arabic is da'if, brother. Anyway, guys, I hope you took notes. So we can conclude that Muslims eat the letter I, right? When they claim that it means the God, which is not. 
So notice, ilah means God, not Allah, right? Not else you need to put here as a letter E. El ilah, when you are going to claim that it means the God. No, it does not mean the God. It's the Islamic name, the name of the Islamic moon God of Islam, right? It's the name, it's a name, and the name is la, because el means the, right? In the old times, el and el mean, meant God. So it's God la, or either the la, right? You can't play those games with me, brother. I'm an Arab. So what are you going to do with the letter I? Are you going to remove it and still claim that it means the God? No, it does not mean the God. Right? You are an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about. Right? I can't answer. I can't even answer what my name is. <laughs> wow. Look, look at this. Look at this level of intelligence of this guy. You're a kid, man. You need to learn a lot, brother. We spanked you today. How many times have I spanked this kid? And I didn't even actually really start my live show today. You're a kid, sit down and maybe you will learn if you pay attention. Guys, let us go to the Muslim apologist who claim to know Islam, all right? Take your headset, put it on your head, and let us actually start spanking Muslim apologist. We'll start with the, with the kids and we we'll move on to Ahmad Idad and Shabir Ali, all right? Let us start. Maybe you have seen the video of our brother, uh, David Wood, how he was he's spanking Yusuf Estes, who claimed to be an ex-Christian. And, and try not to laugh, if you didn't watch this video, try not to laugh, because I really laughed when I watched this video. Watch. Person I've ever debated. He was uh, amazingly wily and crafty in the way he would frame his arguments, very slippery. Um, he would present arguments that were just enough off base that they sounded plausible, but then were really, in fact, quite mistaken. The other two fellows, Yusuf Ismail and Jamal Badawi, I think were more traditional Muslim apologists. And those arguments were not very impressive. I, I particularly find the arguments for Islam based on scientific information hidden in the pages of the Quran to be especially unpersuasive. It sort of reminds me of um, misguided Christians who try to prove that television is predicted in the Bible. I, I muted Things my mic. Sort. Sorry, guys. So, Someone asked, who is this guy? This is William Lane Craig. Sorry for that. Sorry. This is William Lane Craig, a very smart, intelligent Christian apologist and debater. One of the old school debaters uh, of his time, right? Who is mentioning this, uh, the apologist that he debated earlier. Those sorts of arguments were not very impressive. Now, what I wanted to do was to show you how certain other Muslim apologists, even extremely popular Muslim apologists who don't debate, actually have positions. Now they're going to talk points. about Yusuf Estes, guys. So, uh, Yusuf Estes is a convert to Islam oh. from America. He converted from Christianity to Islam when he was a young man, and uh, he, he, he gives his testimony. Basically, he had no evidence, no foundation for Christianity, uh, didn't believe there was any evidence for it, yes. um, accepted it all by faith, and then a Muslim came along and showed that there's good evidence for Islam. And so now he's become a massively uh, popular Muslim speaker. But because he doesn't debate, 
he can kind of say whatever he wants to his Muslim audience, and you're going to uh, get a bit of an idea of what passes for good argumentation uh, among Muslim apologists who don't face you in debate. So we're going we're, we're gonna to look at three short clips here, and I've, I've just divided them up so that we can sort of uh, uh, comment on each one. But I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to be honest. This is not for you to, you know, start a debate, but just be honest. Was Jesus a Catholic? Jesus and was it's a not Catholic. Open to debate, so there's no <laughs> point in opening that up because you know, and I know, he wasn't. The Catholic Church was in business about 300 years before Jesus was born. It's on their website. Don't go like this. It's on their website. That's where I took it from. The Catholic Church was really started in Rome by Alexander the Great. <laughs> the Catholic Church was started by Alexander the Great in Rome. Brother, Alexander the Great never went to Rome. He went the other way. <laughs> he went to the other way. He never went to, to the West. He went to the East. Donkey. Alexander the Great never went to Rome. He had nothing to do with Rome. He conquered countries in the East. You donkey! Alexander the Great founded Roman Cat Catholic Church, guys. You heard, you heard Yusuf Estes. I, I, don't shoot the messenger, guys. What a donkey son of a donkey. Let me continue. This guy claims to be an ex-Christian, guys. Can you imagine? Um. <laughs> Did you catch that? So yes. the, the Catholic Church was in business three centuries before Christ and was founded in Rome by Alexander the Great. So, I wonder what Alexander was doing in Rome. Yeah, he went, he, he went the other direction, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, oh, my. And I wonder what you, he... you heard the gentleman's right, guys. I mean, try not to laugh. Alexander the Great went to east. He didn't went to west. You donkey, Yusuf Estes, you truly have no shame, you have no dignity. You truly have no shame, no dignity. And this is what Muslim apologists, guys, like Yusuf Estes, like Shabir Ali, like Ahmadida, that's what they are doing. They are deceiving their audience and their audience love to be deceived by them. Because if any Muslim, any regular normal Muslim, who is not an apologist, who is not a teacher, would have at least do, done his homework and grabbed this donkey, right? This donkey here that you see here, by his beard. If I was a Muslim and I've done my homework, I would step up, go on the stage where this guy's talking, grab him by his white beard, this sexy beard, and drag him over the floor and say, you are a liar, you're a deceiver, shame on you. I would go on stage, if I was a truthful Muslim, I would go on stage, take that microphone out of his hand, grab him by the beard and drag him over the stage and the floor and wipe the floor with him. But these people have no shame, no dignity. Why are you giving this guy a stage and a mic, man? I will wipe and use his beard as a broom, as the gentleman said in the, in the chat, and wipe the floor with his beard. Why are you Muslims accepting these lies, man? What Christian Catholic website makes the claim that Alexander the Great went to Rome and established the Roman Catholic Church? You liar, you have no shame, you have no honor, no dignity. And I'm going to use these three words, guys, today a lot of times. Muslim apologists like Yusuf Estes have no honor, no shame, and no dignity. And the proof is in front of you. These people truly have no shame, no honor, and no dignity. Why are you Muslims accepting their lies? Alexander the Great never went to Rome. He went to the East. He was a conqueror. He didn't go all the way up to establish any church. And actually, wasn't Alexander the Great a pagan, guys? And also a bisexual? 
Alexander the Great was a pagan bisexual man. And according to Islam, he's a prophet, a bisexual prophet, brother. Bisexual prophet of Allah, Alexander the Great. Dhul Qurnayn, right, Muslims? I hope you enjoyed this number one spanking. Let us move on. Let us move on. You know, you know me, I don't leave Muhammad out of the spanking, right? I don't leave Muhammad out of the spanking. Muhammad, as you see, this is Muhammad using Allah as, as his suck puppet, right? Muhammad used Allah, he adopted Allah, the pre-Islamic moon idol Allah, right? That existed before Islam and the name of the Prophet of Islam, Abdullah is proof of it. Abdullah, the slave of Allah, the father of Muhammad used to worship Allah, the moon idol. So Muhammad, when he created Islam together with his wife Khadija, right? He took this Allah, the moon idol that existed already in the pagan Arab world in Mecca. He took Allah and he created Islam. And he not only that, he actually did huge damage in the Quran. Quran chapter 9, ayah 31. Let me explain to you the shirk in this website. The Quran, chapter 9, Surah at tawbah Other nickname for this chapter is the sword or fighting. Take a wild guess why it is called like that. They have taken their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah and the Messiah. Well, there's nothing called also. It says, Allah wal Masiha, right? Allah and the Messiah. So who are the lords? It's Allah and the Messiah. He, Muhammad, made a huge nuclear bomb. He dropped a nuclear bomb on the faces of Muslims here in the Quran. Right here, right now. So it says, Attakhadu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum arbaba min duni Allahi wal Masiha. So they have taken their scholars and monks as lords, gods, beside Allah and the Messiah. And they are using taqiyya, as you see, adding words. Whenever you see brackets, right? Brackets and words between the brackets, that's what the translator have added. So always remove this. Remove this highlighted word, right? This is the closest translation to the real Arabic Quran that I could find. All of them are doing taqiyya. All of them. Putting words extra, putting their own words, doing bid'ah in the chat. So here, Muhammad dropped a nuclear bomb in the Quran and created a huge, huge disaster, calling Allah and the Messiah. You see, Allahi wa and the word wa means in Arabic and al masiha so allah and the messiah are the lords who should you worship only allah and the messiah Bam! Aha! we see the shirk right here right now shirk 101 blasphemy 101 in chapter 9 ayah 31. take notes Uh, okay, call me. Uh, it's it's uh, it's me, born again. You send me a message through Skype, and you claim to <laughs> have a name called Chris Smith. Call me. Let us have a debate. Well, actually, let me call you. Let's see if this car is going to pick up. I think he's a Muslim convert. He's a Muslim convert. He looks like a uh, Western guy. Pick up the phone, uh, born again. Hello? Hey, how, how's it going, Rob? I'm good. Hey, how are you? You're, you're born again, right? Yes. Are you a convert to Islam? No, don't be stupid. You sound, you sound like a Western guy. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. What, why did you call me? Go ahead. You're live on air. Everybody can hear you, Mr. Born yeah, Again. I understand I'm live on air. First off, I'm not a Muslim. Oh, you're so not a Muslim? No, let's make that. Okay, then call, don't call me and don't waste my time. I, I specifically said, don't call me if you are not a Muslim. So 
Let me ban this guy for not following the rules. Why do you need to call me? You, you are a waste of time. You are here only for troll. Stop calling. Donkeys. Wasting my time, my trolls. I'm not a Muslim, but I want to waste your time. Why are you wasting my time? Why are you debating me in the chat when you are not a Muslim? What are you trying to achieve? I'm not a Muslim. Yes, you are a Muslim, you liar. You have no shame, you have no dignity. He is even lying about being a Muslim. We know it's a Muslim. Potato. Wasting my time. <sighs> Guys, let me show you another disaster that Muhammad created. Actually, two disasters. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? Let me scroll down to prove it to you. Sahih al-Bukhari. Volume 6, Book 60, Hadith number 478. Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you see it? Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, Khadija, she took Muhammad to her cousin Waraka. Right? Khadija took... Donkey, stop calling me. You had your chance. Stop calling me. She took her husband to her cousin Khadija. Khadija then took him to Waraka bin Nofel. The son of Khadija's paternal uncle, Waraka, had been converted to Christianity. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me the word Christianity here in the Arabic. It's not there. So he became a so-called Nasrani, right? There's no, nothing called Christianity in the Arabic. In the pre-Islamic period and used to write Arabic. And write the gospel in Arabic as much Allah wanted to write. Oh, 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 oh. What does it say, guys? The proof is in front of you, right? He used to write Arabic and write the gospel, the Injil in Arabic, as much as Allah wished him to write. Wait, wait, wait. Muslims... Your prophet always claimed that there is no prophet between him and Jesus. How is Mr. Waraka, how is he getting divine revelation from Allah while the prophet of Islam claimed that there is no prophet between him and Jesus. Clearly, Waraka is a prophet too because Allah wants him to write stuff. Allah is having contact with him. So here, <laughs> Waraka suddenly is a prophet too. Uh oh. Waraka, since he is getting divine revelation from Allah and Allah commanding him to do stuff, that, mean, that means that Waraka is a prophet in Islam too. Yes, another prophet. Yes, music learning Nasara are heretic, heretical people. He was a heretic. He used to be called, right? His actually his the name of his household is Abdul Uzza, the slave of Al Uzza, one of the three daughters of Allah, the Islamic, actually the pre-Islamic moon idol Allah. He had three daughters, Allah Al Uzza Wal Manat, and the name of <laughs> Waraka is Abdul Uzza. Waraka Abdul Uzza. Can you imagine? So he became a Nasrani, a heretical sect, a follower of a heretical sect. And he became also a prophet, as you see. He used to write the gospel in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to do. Wait, so according to this hadith, Sahih hadith, Sahih al-Bukhari, Waraka had access to the Injil. And you Muslims dare to claim that the Injil is lost and corrupted? Your prophet had access to the Injil, right? As you see in front of you. And not only that, Waraka is another prophet. Here we can spank Muhammad. That when he said there is no prophet between me and Jesus, he lied from the back of his teeth. Right? And if we continue, guys, let me show you the, the second disaster. If we continue reading, he says... O oh, my nephew Khadija is saying, what have you seen? Sorry, uh, so here Waraka, Waraka is asking Muhammad, O oh, my nephew, what have you seen? 
the Prophet Muhammad then described whatever he had seen in that cave, right? Cave Hira, when uh, uh, Jibreel came to him to squeeze him and told him to read. Iqra, because this is in a cave, echo mode. Iqra, Iqra, Iqra. Ma ana bi qari, ma ana bi qari, qari. I cannot read, read, read. Why can't you read? Because there is nothing to read from. Anyway, let it go. So then Waraka said, this is the same angel, Jibreel, who was sent to Moses. Muslims, I will give you another thousand dollar if you can show me the word angel here in the Arabic text, because this is the original, right Muslims? This is the word. I'll give you a thousand dollar if you can show me what this word means. And if it means actually an angel. No, the word is al namus or al namusu right? Which means the law. The law that was sent to Moses. Right? Which, what is the law? The Mosaic law, right? Which are the 300, six, sorry, 613 laws that the Israelites must follow in their time. So no, the Arabic does not say angel, it says law, namus. So here the Muslim translators, the Muslim scholars got spanked, barbecued and served. There's nothing called angel. There is no word angel. Angel is in Arabic malak. Malak, right? Can you show me the word malak here? Can you show me the word malak here? No, it says namus. هذا الناموس الذي أنزل على موسى. This is the law that was sent down to Moses. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. You said Walaka is claimed to be a prophet. Where yes. did you get that dumb explanation from? Where did I? Can you read? Yes. Okay. Can you read this Where part? Can you, can you see the screen? I know, yes. Okay, can you read this part? This is yes. Sahih al-Bukhari. Where does it say Prophet? Okay, read. As much as Allah wished him to write. What's, what's your point? My point Allah, is, when Allah, Allah is, when Allah, when Allah like directly, when Allah... God wills, God will, wishes him to write. Okay, well, Okay, how, do, how does he know that Allah wants him to write? Go ahead, explain. He wrote the gospel as much as Allah wanted him to write, as how, much as he could. How, as how, he does could. He, how does Waraka know that Allah wants him to write the gospel from Aramaic to Arabic? Go ahead. Huh? How did Waraka ibn Nufil, the cousin Listen. of Khadij... No, 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 answer my question. Let me speak. What, how, that, how did Waraka ibn Nufil know that Allah wants him to write the gospel Where that is used to be in knows? Aramaic to Arabic? Where does it say he knows? This is a term basically saying he wrote as much as he could. As God willed him to write. How does he know that Allah wants him to write the gospel you, from Aramaic to Arabic? Donkey, answer the question. Don't call me names. If you Answer know, the question. You answer the question. Brain, it... Donkey, you don't know Arabic? If you had a brain, who, who has brain? Let me, let me spank this. Let me, let me. Let me explain. Let me block this guy. I have no time for uh, for donkeys, to be honest with you. I have no time for donkeys. Okay? The text clearly says, right? And he used to write Arabic, a write of the Injil, the Gospel, in Arabic, as much as Allah wished him to write. How does Waraka, question, how does Waraka know that Allah wants him to write the gospel from Aramaic? Because we know that Waraka knew Aramaic, like Zayd ibn Thabit, right? Another Sahabi. How did Waraka ibn Nufil know that Allah wants him to write? Ma? Answer the question, man. How did Waraka know? How did Waraka know that Allah wants him to write the gospel in Arabic? And you see, we, sh we already showed you Muslims when they say 
the gospel is lost or corrupted, you are lies, you have no shame, you have no dignity, you have no honor. Because Muhammad access to the gospel, because Waraka was translating the gospel from Aramaic to Arabic. You see these people, you see the lies, you see the, the lies that are getting spanked of Muslims of today. Muslims of today have no idea what they're talking about. JJ, we already talked to this guy many times now. Maybe you just joined. We already spe been spanking him for the last hour, man. If you don't believe me, go rewatch the, 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 from the start. All right? He already called us many times now. And I get tired of spanking the same kid who does not know Arabic, who does not know his own Muslim sources. I'm tired of these kids. Send me a real Muslim apologist, man. No time for kids. Enough is enough. Guys, let me move on. Guys, I really need to go get water, okay? Because my throat is itching again. <clears throat> Let me get water, small break, two minutes maximum, okay? And I'll come back and we will move on about this very interesting topic that you see on the screen, okay? Be right back. Time for some water. Take a small break, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry for that. I hope my sound is still okay. I hope you took some water too, maybe some refreshments. You know, this is a live show and we really need to think about, you know, dehydration. We need some water. So we can continue. So this guy, I asked him the same question over and over. And when you're going to waste my time, I'm going to pluck you because I don't have patience for kids. I only have patience for people who are sincere, who wants to have a real discussion. When I ask you a question, you are my guest and you don't want to answer the question, I'm going to send you away. Send you back to your dead prophet who died like a rat in Medina, right? He's somewhere buried in Medina. And he could not answer questions like of those people who debated him from Najran, right? The Christians who came from Najran to debate Muhammad. He could not even answer their questions. So you can't even answer question, a, a very sincere question. Again, why, before we move to the next topic, guys, how, how did Waraka know that Allah wanted him to translate the gospel, the Injil, from Aramaic to Arabic. Because Aramaic is, was that language, right, in that, in that time. Aramaic was the language that those books used to circle around, right? So Waraka had access to this book and he was translating the gospel in Arabic. How did Waraka know that Allah wanted him to write the gospel in Arabic. Donkey! We know this is not Waraka who is narrating. But how did Waraka know that Allah wanted him to write the gospel in Arabic? 
Did Waraqad receive divine revelation from Allah? Hello? Again, how did Waraqa know that Allah wanted him to write the gospel in Arabic? Answer my question. Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best, right Muslims? Allahu A'lam. So clearly, Waraqa like Muhammad was having divine revelation from Allah. Right? Because when, when you are talking to Allah and you are hearing Allah, that means you are receiving divine revelation. Like the so-called Prophet of Islam. So we can conclude that Waraqa was also a Prophet besides Muhammad, between Jesus and Muhammad. But Muhammad lied, used Taqiyya and said, there is no Prophet between me and Jesus. Which is a lie and the proof is in front of you. Because how did Waraqa else know that Allah wanted him to write the gospel in Arabic if it, this is not divine revelation? Guys, use this. And Phil Herrera just posted the link in the chat. Use this. Use this disaster in your debates. Let them answer the question. Don't allow them to jump around the question. This guy didn't want to answer the question. This is why I blanked him. Right? Let me move to the second topic. Guys, 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 guys. This is a very, very important topic. Someone asked in the chat, I can't remember who that was. Do Arabic speaking Christians in the Middle East call God Allah? This is a very important topic that we should explain. All right. Right, guys, do you agree? Because many people maybe don't know how to deal with this question. Uh, guys who claim that born again is a Christian. No, he's not a Christian. Look what he said. Jehovah is not God. How dare you to call yourself a Christian. But at the same time, you're saying this nonsense. You're a coward. You're a troll. You're a Muslim who is lying about his identity. He said, he said, born again said, Jehovah is not God. You liar. You claim to call yourself a Christian. <laughs> You're a Muslim who is a coward, who is actually ashamed of calling himself a Muslim. That's what you are. He's not Christian. Guys, stop allowing Muslims to deceive you. Be smarter than this. Right? Being there, done that. I'm Thank God for giving me this gift to know how to immediately expose these liars and deceivers, right? Train yourself, Christians, to not be deceived by these liars and deceivers who are too ashamed to say publicly that they are Muslims. Because this is life, they can be recorded and they can be exposed in front of their Muslim brothers and sisters. He is too ashamed to call himself a Muslim, right? He knows what will happen next. Right? Guys, back to my topic. The desperate tactics of Muslims about the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible. Guys, you really need to pay attention when if I'm going to start this, okay? This is really important and I really hope that you're going to benefit from this and train yourself how to deal with Muslim attacks that are about the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible. Take your pens out, guys, and take some notes. All right? Take your pens out and take some notes. Because I'm going to explain to you from a, an Arab point of view, because I'm an Arabic-speaking Christian, how to deal with this. Now, let me give you an example. Right? Let me give you an example. Of about what I'm going to say. Before I'm going to do that, let me tell you what happened. When the gospel, let's say when the gospel or the Bible was translated from Aramaic, again from Aramaic 
to Arabic in the late 8th century, beginning of the 9th century. Guys, I cannot answer your questions in the chat because I'm trying to explain things. So you can ask me questions. I cannot do two things at the same time. If you have a question, keep it for last when the live Q&A session starts. I cannot teach you and answer your questions in the live chat, okay? Please stop questioning me. Write your question down and ask me when I'm done teaching. All right? I can't answer questions in the chat and teach at the same time. Please help me to help you. You want to learn about this very important topic and how to deal with the Muslim objections about the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible, then you need to pay attention or just leave. If you are not interested, just leave, guys. Maybe this is not for you. All right? Just leave. This is not for you else. So if you want to concentrate, concentrate on what I'm going about to say to you. Again, to the people who are interested in, about this very important topic, that Muslim often use as objection, okay? Okay, let us start. Pay attention, please. Don't pay attention to the people who are trolls or trying to, you know, get you out of this very important teaching. Focus with me. Again, about the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible. In the late 8th century, beginning of the 9th century, when the Christians were, were under the Islamic rule, right? Muslims conquered countries like Egypt, like Syria, like Iraq, right? Like Turkey. So the Christians were forced, the Christians in the Middle East, when their countries were conquered by the Muslim armies, they were forced to learn Arabic that was never their language for example christians in egypt they spoke the coptic language they had their own coptic language christians in let's say syria they spoke aramaic christians in iraq they spoke aramaic right so when the muslim armies came and conquered with the sword of allah and muhammad the christian countries like turkey like syria like iraq like egypt they also force the Arabic language on these people, right? Did you catch it? So they force the Arabic language on these people. That was never their language. We spoke Aramaic. We spoke Coptic language. All right. Did you catch it? I hope you caught it. Give me one if you caught it so we can continue from there. So the Arabic language was forced on the poor Christians under the Muslim rule. Now, for the Christians who are who were forced to use the Arabic language that was never theirs, to still preach Christianity, to still learn their children about the Holy Bible, they had to also translate the Aramaic Bible to the Arabic language so that their children can will not forget the Holy Bible, right? So, so imagine you're, you're a father, you have children. Those children, maybe don't, they don't speak Aramaic anymore because they are forced to learn Arabic. They are, the language Arabic is forced on them. So to still understand the Arabic in the new language that they are getting taught, they had to translate the Aramaic Bible into Arabic. And that's how the Arabic translation came to existence. But, guys, this is very important. Under the Muslim watchful eye. So when the Christians were translating the Holy Bible, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, the Holy Bible, right? Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas, into Arabic from Aramaic, Muslims were watching. Big Brother is watching you. So... They had to use a language that was never theirs in the Arabic translation. To make good sentences, they had to use the word Allah. But Allah was never the God of the Christians in the Middle East. It was always Jehovah. It was always the Rabb, the Lord, right? Jehovah, right? That's history. 
So Christians had to, you know, translate the Bible to the Arabic, Arabic language under the Muslim watchful eye. Big brother is watching you. And let me explain it by showing you an example from John. All right, guys? Let us go to John 1.1, 1, 1, for example. Guys, take your pens out and learn from what I'm going to teach you here. For example, from the King James Version, John 1.1. 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, <clears throat> and the Word was with God. My voice is gone. <clears throat> and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, let me show you the Aramaic, right? This is the Aramaic, and then I'm going to show you the Arabic. I can read the Aramaic, guys. Let me read the Aramaic for you from John 1.1. 1, 1. Pay attention. Brishet ithau umutho o mutho, ithau loth, aloho aloho ithau mutho. If we translate this to the Arabic, as the Christians did in the late 8th century, beginning of the 9th century, they read it as this, and they translate it as this. فِي كَانَ الْكَلِمَةَ وَالْكَلِمَةَ كَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَكَانَ الْكَلِمَةَ الله. Right? كَانَ الْكَلِمَةَ الله. Not كَانَتْ but كَانَ الْكَلِمَةَ الله. Uh oh What does this mean? In the beginning, right, was the word, but it's not can it, it's can, right, or canna. Can means he was, he was. So do you see how the Christians actually tricked the Muslims? Imagine the Muslims are watching you, you are translating the Holy Bible from Aramaic to Arabic. But the Christians, they are very smart. They put instead of kana tel kalima, they put kana. It makes it as he was. Who? Jesus. Did you catch what the Christians, the smart Christians did? So yes, they used the word Allah because they, the Arabic language was forced on them. Right? God, Allah, the name of the Islamic God. But to still, because the Muslims are watching, they are forcing this word on them, right? They still manage to teach their children from the Arab Arabic translation of the Holy Bible that this word is a he. Can kalima, right? He. The word is a he. Did you see how the smart Christians did? What they did? Not kanat, but kan al kalima. Bam! Uh oh! Wow! So still the truth is being here taught to their children. So pay attention, this word is a male. It's a man, right? Do you see it? Still, they are being controlled by the Muslims. They have to force, they are forced to use the word Allah. That was never their God. But still, they are, you know, to still teach their children the truth. Even when they are being controlled, their translation is being controlled by the Muslims. They are still explaining their children, teaching their children in the translation. Be sure, it's, this word is a he. Who is he? Jesus, right? Because this word, if we go down, scroll down, this word became flesh, right? John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst, among us. We have seen his, again, his, he, right? This word became a he. Became Jesus Christ, His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is that He? Is Jesus. Thank you very much. Bam! Do you see the He? Right? His. And in the Arabic, right? In the Arabic, not kanat, the word, it. It's not it. It's He. K 
كان الكلمة عند الله so the he he the word is with God did you catch what the Christians did in their translations guys to still preach the truth even under Muslim control they are watching they are doing they are watching every step when they were translating the Holy Bible from Aramaic into Arabic I hope you caught it guys if you didn't catch it you need to rewatch this very important video of today because we are spanking Muslims left and right so the Christians used he right for the for the word of God right they used he they, did, they didn't use كانت الكلمة no they used كان الكلمة عند الله right this is how to deal with Muslim objections when it comes to you know because I have many, many how many times did they come to you actually guys how many times did they actually come to you and say yeah you you know you can find the name Allah in the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible but they don't tell you why because unfortunately most of you Christians don't know Arabic and you cannot answer this question but I hope today you benefited from my explanation and now you can use them you use it against them in the court of law right I hope you learned from this so under the Islamic watchful eye they still the Christians when they were translating they were still preaching the truth even even when the word Allah was forced on them right because you cannot make a good sentence by using the word ilah right so they had to use Allah right right No, yeah, the word became a he, right? In the Arabic translation, it is still he, right? That's the word. In the, in the beginning was the word. And that word is a he, right? As we showed you. It's a he. The word, right? It's a he. Oh, the word is a he. You see it? He is the only son. Chapter 1, verse 14. Masculine, exactly. And that's what the Christians also used in the Arabic translation. Can or can, right? He, not canat, no, can or can. I hope you guys, if you are in the nations, download my video translate it to Indonesia, Indonesian language and share it with the poor victims in Indonesia. They need to learn about this, that the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible still uses he as their word, right? Kanat is like, is like ba basically, uh, you know, it's not a he, it's not he, it's the, it's not the word he, right? Kanat al-kalima. Right? But Kana is he. So the he form is used for the word. Right? The word is al kalima Right? But Kana. Kana is for a male. Or can. Or Kana is used for male. It's a masculine word. So it, this word is being addressed to a male. And in this case, Jesus Christ. Right? So Muslims cannot fool you anymore about the Arabic translation of the Holy Bible. Whenever they use this argument, this objection, use it against them in the court of law. Right? <clears throat> no, Adam Snow, you donkey. Kana means he. The word is he. Right? Kana means he, not this, you donkey. You don't know Arabic. Donkey, Adam Snow, you're a Pakistani, you have no idea what you're talking about. You are a Pakistani who claims to know Arabic, you don't. 
you just got spanked and serve for everybody to see. Kana al kalima. The word is he. He he is the word. Kana, not kanat. Donkey. And by the way, guys, when we say donkey, according to uh, one of the Muslim scholars that we debated, Sheikh Ruhi, you can go watch my video, my debate with Sheikh Ruhi, a PhD Al Azhari Sheikh. When I mentioned the hadith where Muhammad said, if you raise your head before the Imam finished the Islamic prayer, Allah will turn your head into a donkey. When I said to, to him, do you believe that Allah actually will change your head in or turn your head into a, that of a donkey? He said, no, no, brother, this is a metaphor. Allah would actually not change your head to a, of a donkey. Donkey means ignorant, right? An idiot. So when we call Muslims donkeys, that means you are an ignorant idiot. You're stupid. This is why you have so many donkeys in the Middle East, guys. Right? Metaphorical donkey. You are a metaphorical donkey. You're a stupid idiot fool. That's why there are so many donkeys in the Islamic world. Especially in the Middle East. I didn't say it, guys. Sheikh said it. Sheikh, PhD Sheikh from Al Azhar, Egypt, Cairo. Sheikh Ruhi, right? Guys, let us continue the spanking and go and play for you another video of a Muslim apologist. <clears throat> I'm also going to show you the deception of this YouTube channel called The Merciful Servant. They have more than 2.6 million subscribers and these people are nothing but liars and deceivers. And I'm going to expose their lies and deception right here, right now. Watch. I say it states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So as you see, this Abdul is clearly trying to force Muhammad in Isaiah 42, 13. He is deliberately trying to force his fake prophet in this verse. This verse does not talk about Muhammad. It is talking about the Lord will go forth as a mighty man. So he deliberately removed two words, which is thee and Lord. The Lord go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail again over his enemies. You, Mr. Merciful Servant, or whoever made this video on that YouTube page, you are nothing but a liar and a deceiver and you have no shame and you have no dignity. Playing with our scripture, removing words to deceive your Muslim audience for your own personal deceptive agenda. Shame on you. You truly have no dignity. You have no shame. If we go to Isaiah 42 verse 13, I'm going to prove to you that he deliberately removed the Lord go forth. He removed those two first two words. That's how Muslims are. They will always deceive to force their fake prophet in our scripture. Let us go to Isaiah 42 verse 13 from our Bible. Okay guys, so let us go there and prove to you how these people are nothing but liars. And the merciful servant is one of the biggest YouTube channels. Are you still with me, guys? It's one of the biggest YouTube channels that you can find on YouTube. So they removed, this is Isaiah 42, 13. They removed the Lord and they are saying this is Muhammad. So when you're going to do that and play with our scripture and put three dots and ellipses, right? You saw it, guys. They removed the Lord and put an ellipsis, three dots, 
and made it sound as, as if this verse is talking about Muhammad. Are you saying that our God, the Lord, is Muhammad? That means you are a blasphemer, you are a mushrik, you are associating partners with God. Yes, the merciful servant, the three million subscribers YouTube channel, he has more than three million subscribers and he's deceiving them all by saying that this is Muhammad. Jehovah became Muhammad. Are you saying that our God, our holy God, the Most High, the name above all names, our holy living God is Muhammad? You mushrik, son of a mushrik, merciful servant. And let me play this video furthermore, guys, and show you how Muhammad Hijab is nothing but a mushrik blasphemer. Let me continue the video, guys. Muhammad Hijab, yeah. Allah is praying for, not to, the Prophet. <laughs> that same guy. Let me put up my headset on and let us. This is Isaiah 42 13 from the King James Version. As you see, the Abdul from Merciful Servant, he deliberately placed three dots instead of the Lord. Did you catch it? The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So who is the warrior here? It's the Lord himself, not Muhammad. You filthy liars and deceivers have no shame you have no dignity removing God from our scripture himself and trying to force Muhammad instead you truly have no shame you are truly Satan followers you are truly Satan worshipers for playing with the Holy Bible like it is a toy as if it is a toy in your hands. Shame on you for doing that. So no, it's not talking about Muhammad. It's talking about the Lord himself. The Lord will prevail against his enemies, not Muhammad. So thank you for showing us that you are nothing but a mushrik. And if your Muslim audience believe in what you say, they are also mushrikeen with you. You commit shirk day and night. And we know you Muslims actually worship Muhammad. This is why you want to force Muhammad in Isaiah 42 in verse 13. Removing the Lord and placing three dots deliberately trying to force Muhammad instead. You truly have no shame, you have no dignity, and you are nothing but a mushrik. You are nothing but a mushrik. Shame on you. I say it states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Throughout history, God has dealt sternly with those who are sent guidance and persist in disbelief. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By so as you heard, he's really trying to force Muhammad into this. He has really no shame. He has no dignity. So he's wanting to tell you that it's not the Lord who will prevail over his enemies, it's Muhammad. Thank you for showing us again that you are nothing but a mushrik. You are nothing but a mushrik. Shame on you. Calling Muhammad God himself. You see how deceptive they are? Placing three dots instead of the Lord. They really have no shame. They have really no honor, no dignity, nothing. You know, the devil will always try 
to do his best to deceive humans. And these people are nothing but devil worshippers, followers of Satan, using deception to deceive as many as they can. ...are the Arabs. So the people of this prophet is going to be sent to the Arabs. Listen to this. It's mentioned also that he will be a warrior prophet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's going to be sent to the people of Kedar, mm -hmm. the Arabs. Mm -hmm. And then the people on the, the Mounts of Sela will be rejoicing. What are the Mounts of Sela? Where is it? By the way, I'll tell you where the Mounts of Sela are. They're in a place called Medina. I'll tell you where that is in a second. It's in the Arabian Peninsula. He will be a warrior prophet. He will prevail over his enemy. As you heard, these people have no shame. They really have no dignity. This is Muhammad Hijab who said, Allah prays for, not to Muhammad. This is the Muhammad Hijab who said that. You see, this guy is also another deceiver. Like Shamsi, like those other people from Merciful Servant. This Muhammad Hijab lying and using deception to force Muhammad inside Isaiah 42. As we showed you, no, it's not the warrior prophet, it's the Lord himself who is the warrior who will prevail over his enemies. So you guys, you, you, you have seen how many people, how many Muslims are nothing but deceivers and liars. Showing everybody that you must worship Muhammad because when you say it's Muhammad in Isaiah 42, 13, that means you are calling Muhammad the God of the Holy Bible, as we showed you on the screen. So even Muhammad Hijab, this donkey, this liar, removing the name, the Lord, Jehovah, and putting Muhammad there. Do you see how these people are nothing but mushrikeen? Huh? Mushrikeen. You are blasphemers when you say Muhammad is the Lord of the Holy Bible. So we spanked Muhammad Hijab and we spanked the merciful servant and we proved to everybody that these people have no dignity, no honor, no shame when they call Muhammad the God of the Holy Bible. You, they are proving to us that they are actually worshippers of Muhammad. Do you see how the Muslim apologists actually prove to everybody that they are worshippers of Muhammad? Did you catch it, guys? <laughs> Let us move on, guys. Let us move on. Let me see what other videos we can play and refute. Let's continue. That the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was mentioned by name in the Bible. <coughs> mentioned by name. Really? In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, in the Hebrew language, it says, Hikko mamittakim vi kullu muhammadim zahdudi vi zahrei bainat Jerusalem. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word Muhammadim is Muhammadim. The word is there. The word the is Hebrew there. Language. Yes, it's there. In the original, what they call original, it's there. It's there. And now, what's your point? But they have translated that in English as altogether lovely. So this beloved of mine is altogether lovely, says Solomon. Okay. Muhammad Im, they translated as altogether lovely. But the word Muhammad is there in the Hebrew language in the original. Guys, did you hear that? He claims that the name of Muhammad is mentioned in Song of Songs 5.16. However, the Christians have taken the name Muhammad from the Hebrew language and translated into altogether lovely in the English language. Why did Muhammad was mentioned in Song of Songs 516 and why did Ahmadidat do not go to many other verses that mention the word, the Hebrew word 
Mahmadim. Because this is not the only verse in Song of so Songs 5.16 where this word is mentioned. It's mentioned in many different verses all over the Bible. We're going to show you now why this Abdul, this Ahmadidat, used this tactic, this deception, to only go to the Song of Songs 516. Why did Ahmadidat did not go to a different verse to show you that Muhammad is there? Guys, we're going to destroy Ahmadidat today. And I want you to to download this video after I'm done download this video and share it around on all your social media accounts because Muslims still today after 35 years are still following this liar and deceiver so let us dissect the two deceptions that Ahmadidat used here we're going to address them both and we're going to destroy and expose this a liar this late Ahmadida that Muslims are still proud about let us start dissecting this claim deception number one the Hebrew word which Ahmadida is referring to in the Song of Songs 516 is Mahmad which can also be pronounced as Mahmad or Muhammad this word in the Hebrew language simply means desirable, pleasant thing, precious or valuable. The word Muhammad in the Arabic language means the praised one. So as you see, these are different meanings. So the Arabic meaning means the praised one and the Hebrew meaning means desirable, pleasant thing, precious or valuable. So, different meaning. Why is Mr. Ahmadidat using this tactic? Because he's a liar and a deceiver. So, here we just uncovered deception number one and destroyed it. Because you cannot make a cake, Mr. Ahmadidat, and eat it too. If you're going to use a word which has a meaning, because we know Muhammad is a title, it's not really a name, it's a title. Muhammad, guys, don't forget, that was not his real name. He simply took that name when he became a so-called prophet of Arabia. He took the title, which is a divine title, and he used it as his name. It's the praised one. But the Hebrew word, Mahmad, or Muhammad, means totally different it's a different meaning so here we destroyed deception number one let us go to deception number two deception number two Ahmadi Dad did not mention that the Hebrew word Muhammad is not only mentioned in the Song of Songs 516 but rather this word is actually mentioned about 12 times as I said earlier in the Holy Bible it's mentioned more than once. But why did Ahmed Didat specifically go to Song of Songs 516? Now we are going to show you why he did not go to a different verse. So why did Ahmed Didat only refer to the Song of Songs 516? Let's have a look at other verses in the scripture, in our scripture, with the same word. And then we will understand why. So if we go to a different verse, like this one, Isaiah 64, 11, it says, Our holy and beautiful temple, where our fathers praised you, is burned up with fire, and our pleasant things are laid waste. Now if we're going to change pleasant things, with, which here means Muhammad to Muhammad to the, to the Prophet Muhammad because remember Ahmed Didat said Muhammad is mentioned by name so if we put here under pleasant things Muhammad then Muhammad the Prophet of Islam is laid to waste so Mr. Deceiver Mr. Liar 
Ahmadi that why didn't you mention Isaiah 64 11 because your prophet will be laced to waste he will be laid to waste your own prophet <laughs> you see the deception guys right you see the deception so Mr. Ahmadidat, the Hebrew word is translated to our pleasant things in Isaiah 6, 40, 64, 11 is Muhammad. So using Ahmadidat's logic and tactic, Isaiah 64, 11 should read like this. Our holy and beautiful temple where your fathers praised you is burned up with fire and Muhammad, Muhammad, our pleasant things is laid waste, like I said. So your prophet, Muslims, according to Ahmadidat, is laid to waste. So he is destroyed. <laughs> you see the deception of Mr. Ahmadidat? He used verses like Song of Songs 516 for his own agenda. And like we said, Mahmad, the word Mahmad, is used for like 12 verses in the Bible that word so Mr. Ahmadidat you can't make a cake and eat it too you're nothing but a liar and a deceiver and now 35 years later you have been spanked and you have been exposed and searched for everyone to see shame on you shame on you for challenging the living God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob when you challenged him this is why he silenced you because our holy God is a living God and when you are challenging our holy living God he will answer so this is the deception of Mr. Ahmed Didad so that was just one of the examples where the Hebrew word Muhammad or Muhammad is used this way in the holy scriptures other examples will be in Ezekiel 24, 16, where the Hebrew word Muhammad or Mahmad is used to describe the prophet Ezekiel's wife because she was desirable to Ezekiel himself. So, are you telling me that Muhammad was a gay? If you're going to say that Muhammad <laughs> was the one who was desirable to Ezekiel, that means Muhammad was a gay, but we know why Mr. Ahmadidat went only to Song of Songs 516 because he had an agenda and he thought that we Christians are too stupid, we don't know our scripture to expose this liar and deceiver. This guy, like I said earlier, did it for money. He did it for fame. He didn't. So guys, this is the way to spank Ahmadidat. Ahmadidat, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. So guys, we mentioned Isaiah 64, 11, and we mentioned Ezekiel 24, 16, where the same word, Mahmad is used, desirable. One of, one of them is laid to waste, right? So the desirable, is laid to waste. So Muhammad is laid to waste. Thank you for proving to us that when you're going to play these games, Mr. Ahmadidad, why are you not going to other verses but but Song of Songs 516? Right? So Muhammad is laid to waste, as we proved it, and Muhammad, according to Ahmadidad, is gay. Because it's the same word. It sounds the same, right? So it must be Muhammad, Mr. Ahmadidad. So as you see guys, <laughs> Ahmadidat <laughs> just spanked Muhammad for us and actually called Muhammad a bisexual fugle, <laughs> homo, <laughs> faggot and he's going to be destroyed in hellfire, lay to waste. Muhammad the fugle, <laughs> Muhammad the gay, the homo and Muhammad who is going to get destroyed according to Muhammad's follower Ahmadidat the deceiver the liar Mr. Deceiver lie why didn't you go 
to Isaiah 64. Why didn't you go to Ezekiel 24? We know why now, why? Because you're going to prove to your audience, Mr. Ahmadi, that, that Muhammad is gay, bisexual, fagile, homo, and Muhammad is going to be laid to waste. He's going to burn in hellfire for eternity. Right, Muslims? Are you still proud about Ahmadidat Muslims? When we just spanked Ahmadidat, especially for you, he is barbecued, he is spanked and served after 35 years for everybody to see again. And actually, this is why Allah silenced him. Uh, I mean God, right? <laughs> when you're going to challenge God, God will answer, right? Lying about our holy scripture. So Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you have no honor. Mr. Ahmadi Dad, you have no shame. This is why you are actually lying about the Holy Scripture, Mr. Ahmadi Dad. Right? Let us continue the spanking, guys. I hope you are enjoying our live show. Are you enjoying yourselves, guys? Are you benefiting from this? Putu, Putu, Mayam. If you call yourself not a boy, you just called me a boy. If you call yourself a man, call me live right here, right now. My Skype is open. Call me right here, right now. Let us see who the boy is and who the real man is. Do we have any Muslims? My Skype is open. My Skype is the Rob Christian. Again, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. I challenge you to call me and let us see who the boy is and who the man is. Yalla ya akhwan, yalla. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Yalla ya shabab, I'm here, I'm live. We are live on air. How many YouTube channels do you see who allow Muslims to call? Don't say you're a coward. Don't say we don't allow you to speak. Call us and let us see you. <clears throat> and we have only Muslims in the chat who are actually insulting me. That's what they are doing. Well, guys, I really don't uh, get hurt from cursing and insults. Because my Lord and Savior said, you're going to get persecuted. You're going to get insulted because of me. But blessed are the ones who are getting persecuted and cursed because of me. So actually when you are insulting me and cursing me, I am the blessed one. Thank you for your cursing and name calling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because because of you, I'm receiving a lot of blessings. According to my Lord and Savior. I am blessed. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. Thank you for your insults. Thank you for your cursing and name calling. Because you are bankrupt, because you are bankrupt, you have no other way than to insult us and curse us and call us names. Right? Because you are seeing that your Muslim heroes like Ahmadidat are going down. We are showing everybody how easy it is to spank Ahmadidat, one of the Muslim heroes. This is why you are so angry with me, right, Muslims? <laughs> right? This is why you're so angry. Let us continue the spanking, guys. Let us continue the spanking. This is in another video, guys, of Ahmadidat. Let's see how we are going to spank him again. Let me play the video. Guys, put back on your headsets. And let us continue the spanking. All right, let us continue the spanking. Questions? The lady over here. Right. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves? Um, because of the weakness of men, shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil? And Guys, did you catch the question of this lady? The lady is asking, can you e explain why uh, in Islam there we have the 
hijab, right? Isn't it uh, actually a form of uh, basically putting a woman down, right? Let me go back and for people who maybe you didn't hear the question again, let me go back a little bit. Two questions. Bloody focus, guys, here. focus. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil and did Mary have to wear a veil? Did you catch, guys, did you catch her question? I hope you got caught her question. So she's asking why, why in Islam they, the Muslim women have to uh, put on a veil, a hijab, right? So let us see if he's going actually to answer her question. Let us see if Ahmadi dad is going to answer the question. Watch. Madam, Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her head. Your Where's the answer of the lady, guys? Did he answer the question? See how he's deflecting, guys? Did you see how he's deflecting? Instead of answering her question, which is a question about Islam, he immediately attacks the Bible, right? Gymnastics, exactly. Again, let me scroll back how, how he's answering. ...themselves um, because of the weakness of men. Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil? And did Mary have to wear a veil? See how he's going to deflect this. Deflecting, not madam, answering the question. Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible your says... Your Bible says, brother. Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you... Paul. ...that the woman must cover her head. That the woman who doesn't cover her shave off her hair. Your Bible says that. Boy, oh I'm going to spank you right here, right now. Guys, watch how I'm going to spank you. The woman, the woman who bears her hair, says shave them off. Shave. Guys, watch how easy it is to spank this Abdul. Okay? Let me go to the Bible. Right? We are not scared, brother. Don't, don't worry. Be happy. You are not scared. We are not scared to go to the Bible. So, guys, point number one. The guy did not answer the question. He deflected and he immediately went to the Bible and started to attack Paul. Right? And this is the scripture that he's talking about. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 11, right? 1 Corinthians 11. Let me go to the part what, what he is talking about. So, this is the part that he's talking about. But I would have you known that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God, right? Every man praying or prophesying have his head covered. This on earth his head. But every woman that prayeth, so this is talking about praying, guys, or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonored her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it's to be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Right? Eve for Adam. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is the man is of the man and uh, even so is the man also by the woman but all things of god judge in yourself is the commonly to a woman pray unto god uncovered doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair it's a shame unto him but guys now watch here comes the answer here comes the refutation of ahmadidat but if a woman have long hair it's a glory to her 
for her hair is given her for covering. Bam! What is the cover in Christianity for the woman? Her hair is her cover for her head. So women, what is your hijab in Christianity? Your own hair. Bam! You donkey Ahmed did that. You deceiver Ahmed did that. You Ahmed did that. You have no honor. You have no shame. You have no dignity because you are not continuing reading. The Bible is not to be quoted out of context, Mr. Ahmed did that. So what is the head covering of the Christian women? Their hair. Ahmed did that. You have no honor, you have no shame, and you have no dignity. I applaud you for no having an, any honor, Mr. Ahmadidat. You have no shame, you have no dignity, and you have been spanked and served over and over today. You liar, you deceiver, you have no shame. When you're going to challenge God, God will silence you for your lies and deception, Mr. Ahmadidat. So the head covering... Shave your head, right? Your your poll, your poll, your Bible says you. If you don't cover your head, shave it, brother. The head covering is her, the hair of the woman, right? Donkey, son of a donkey. Thirty-five years ago, that's what you were, Mister Ahmed Didat. You are the donkey, son of a donkey. Shame on you for lying and deceiving your Muslim audience. And guys, did you see how he deflected? He didn't answer the question about Islam. He immediately went to the Bible and attack, attacking the Bible, using taqiyya about the Bible, lying about the Bible. Right? Right? What a, what a donkey. What a deceiver, man. Guys, I hope you took notes. So according to the Bible, the hair of the woman are their head covering. But Mr. Ahmadi Dad, not continue. Why are you not continue reading to see what this head covering is? Do you see guys how easy it is to spank this liar and deceiver Ahmadi Dad? Right? What was today's topic guys? Exposing Muslim tactics, exposing Muslim apologists like Ahmed Idad. We spanked Muhammad Hijab, right? We spanked Ahmed Idad. We spanked the Merciful Servant YouTube channel. And we are going to continue spanking and spanking and spanking. No problemo, brother. That's the today's to mission that's today's goal to spank muslim apologists and i hope you're enjoying yourselves today guys is this good guys do you like this people in the chat are you liking what we are doing today is is this good should we continue this spanking all right you said it i see a lot of ones you said it, not me. So let us continue the spanking. Let us do that. Uh, the question is, if it's not, well, it's not very clear to part of the audience, that uh, Moses performed miracles, Jesus performed miracles, but he has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. Now, wait, 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 wait. Did you hear what he said? Just said, guys. Did you hear what he said? Let me go back. This is a huge claim. Watch. Yes, if it's not, well, it's not Listen carefully, guys. Part of the audience. That uh, Moses performed miracles. Jesus performed miracles. But... He has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. According to Ahmad Idad, guys, did you catch what he said? Ahmad Idad said, Muhammad performed miracles. Did you hear it? Guys, again, just to be sure. No knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles. Did you hear it? 
You heard it, right? Muhammad performed miracles. Guys, let me spank this liar once again. Let me spank this liar once again. I'm going to spank him from the Quran and from the Hadith. I'm going to spank this dead liar from his own Quran and from his own Hadith. He's lying about his Prophet. What did Muhammad guys say in the Hadith? Let anyone who is lying about me take his seat in hellfire. What did Muhammad the Prophet of Islam said in Sahih al-Bukhari? Let anyone who is lying about me take his seat in hellfire. I'm going to prove to you that Ahmadirat is now burning in hellfire. Again, I am going to prove to you that Ahmadidad is now burning in hellfire according to his own prophet of Islam. Take notes guys. Let us start and show you that Ahmadidad is now being barbecued by Satan according to the prophet of Islam. Watch. Chapter 17, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 59. Let me show you the lies of this deceiver, Ahmadidad. Chapter 17, Ayah 59, Allah saying, And we refrain from sending signs. Uh oh We are refraining from sending miracles. Signs means miracles, right? Right? Bil ayati. Signs, miracles. So Allah stop sending miracles. Uh oh Allah refrained from sending miracles. So the Quran actually confirming that Muhammad did not receive any miracles. Bam, you liar, you are burning in hellfire. To make it even more worse for Ahmadidat. Sahih al-Bukhari. Take notes. Take notes. Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 49, 81. Hadith number 49, 81. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari, Bukhari. I hope you are benefiting from this, guys. Narrated Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, every Prophet was given miracles. Watch. Muhammad said, every Prophet was given miracles because of which people believed. But, 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 what I have been given is divine revelation. Clearly, Muhammad is saying, I did not get any miracles. The every prophet was given miracles, but what I have been given is divine revelation. So let anyone who is lying about his prophet in Islam, like Ahmadidad, take his seat in hellfire. Because your prophet just said, I did not receive miracles except divine revelation. BAM! You just called your prophet a liar, Mr. Ahmadidat. Mr. Ahmadidat, you just called your prophet a liar. Shame on you. You lied about your Quran because Allah said we refrained. We stopped sending miracles. Chapter 17, Ayah 59. And from Sahih al-Bukhari. The second most important source of the Quran to go to, Sahih al-Bukhari saying every prophet was given miracles but i muhammad i only received divine revelation muhammad clearly confirming that he did not receive miracles right his only miracle is the quran right because divine inspiration is the quran itself so muhammad did not did or perform any miracles what did ahmadidat say guys let me show you again what ahmadidat said clear to part of the audience that uh, Moses performed miracles yes Jesus performed miracles yes but he has no knowledge whether the Holy Prophet Muhammad performed miracles now in the book of traditions more than 300 miracles I ascribe to the Holy so are you saying that your prophet is a liar Mr. Ahmadira <laughs> Muhammad himself saying I didn't perform miracles the Quran itself says Allah did not give miracles or let Muhammad perform miracles. We refrain, brother, from sending miracles. The only miracle is the Quran.
right? The only miracle in Islam, guys, is the Quran according to many Muslim scholars. So Ahmad Idad, you are a liar. You are a deceiver. You have no shame. You have no dignity. Lying about your prophet. So take your seat in hellfire according to your prophet. Your prophet said, anyone who is lying about me, let him take his seat in hellfire. So Mr. Ahmad Idad is burning now at the moment in hellfire according to the prophet of Islam. Guys, 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 watch this comedy, guys. Islam is peace, just throw Ahmad Idad under the bus. Look what he's saying. Islam is peace saying, rob Christian, try other sheikh or imam. So Islam is peace. You just confirm that Ahmad Idad is a liar and deceiver and you throw him under the bus. I applaud you. I applaud you, my friend. You just thrown Ahmad Idad under the bus. Applaud, applaud, applaud. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Let me salute you. Guys, give him an applaud. He just put Ahmed Idad under the bus. I applaud you, man. Congratulations. Is there enough applaud? My pleasure. My pleasure to applaud you for throwing Ahmed Idad under the bus. I love this. Let me continue, guys. Let me continue how Ahmed Idad is getting spanked by us today. Let me continue this. I'm literally enjoying this. I hope you are enjoying this because I am enjoying this. Prophet Muhammad But the Muslim does not make an issue of it. Because those miracles of the prophets gone by are things in books. They are a matter of history. So saying that, look, my prophet did this and your prophet did that. Look, this guy is asleep. Again. Look, this guy is, doesn't even care what so Ahmed Idad is. Look, my prophet did this and your prophet did that. Man, sleeping. You see, again and again, the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he referred to the Quran. A living miracle. You see, the miracles of Moses, you know, Crossing the Red Sea. Yes. Right. Striking the rock and rivers gushing forth. Yeah. Unfortunately, Muhammad didn't have miracles. Jesus turning water into wine. Killing those 2,000 pigs. Drying up the fig tree from the very roots. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. Now, these are things in books. You see, mm -hmm. you say, look, man, I don't know whether it happened or it didn't happen. It might sound like a fairy tale to most people. So he said, look, talk about this. Yeah, Islam is a fairy tale. Islam is a fairy tale. this to you. You know, in a lecture in the series, Al-Quran, a visual miracle. In other words, that you today in the 20th century, you can verify that this I'm looking is for the part. Oh, here, yeah, I think, yeah. Your question, I can see. Wait. Guys, we Muslims, I'm going to spank him again, watch. That this is the last testament. Because it answers all your problems. Whether it is palatable or not, I'm not I can't guarantee focus, that. Guys, focus, guys, focus. It will go down well. But it answers your problems. Now, this is what Jesus Christ had promised. You see in the Gospel of St. John. Gospel of St. John, Jesus watch guys. Jesus Christ is telling his disciples, he said, I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Yes. Jesus, God had given him guidance to guide humanity till doomsday. Yeah, yeah, but okay. But the people that he was addressing, his immediate disciples, they were not fit to receive the message. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things soever shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. Who is the spirit of truth? Who? Me. Who? Jesus. Who is that one? Watch. Uh -huh. We say, who is the spirit of truth? Yes, who is it? We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. We Muslims claim that spirit of truth is Muhammad. Did you catch it? Let me go back a little bit. This is blasphemy. This is shirk 101. Muhammad. The spirit of truth in John 14, John 16 is Muhammad. What did he say? We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. What did you claim? Truth. We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. Again, for the people who didn't hear it. 
Now, we say, who is this spirit of truth? We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. Boy, oh boy, we're going to spank you again. Boy, oh boy, we're going to spank you again. You boy, like, like Muhammad Hijab. You boy, you boy, you Ahmadi dad. You boy, you boy. Okay, stop quoting uh, Muhammad Hijab. This is not funny. Because this is a huge spanking again. Let me show you that this guy is nothing but a mushrik, son of a mushrik, right? We're going to show you that Ahmad Ida just called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. Let me prove to you that Ahmad Ida just called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. Let me prove it to you. This is John 16, guys. Let me scroll back to show you and prove to you that this is the same John that he's talking about. John, sorry, John 14, and I'll go to John 16 too. John 14, <clears throat> John 14, scrolling down. Let me start reading from here. <clears throat> Jesus saying, Jesus said unto them, have I been so long time with you and yet has to not known me, Philip? So he's asking Philip, his disciple. He that had seen me had seen the father. So Jesus is claiming, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. Wow. Jesus claimed divinity here. He claimed to be equal with the father in heaven. Did you catch it? So you, Philip, are you still not convinced that I'm God? Are you still not convinced, Philip, my disciple? Are you still not convinced that I am God? If you have seen me, you have seen my Father, God in heaven. Wow! Jesus just claimed to be God. And let it go. Christians, let it go. Let it go. And how say it though then, show us the Father. So why are you asking me to show you the Father? Why you have just seen me and I... If you've seen me, that means you've seen the Father. you just seen God in front of you because I am God. So why are you still asking me to show you the Father? Believes do not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And you ask us, where did Jesus say I'm God? Well, the proof is in front of you, Muslims. Jesus just claimed to be God. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelt in me, again, divinity claim, claiming that he is God. He do the works. I believe, so then he continues, Jesus continues saying, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very words, works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Jesus saying, he that believed on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go unto my father again god jesus calling god his father and what whatsoever you shall ask in my name in whose name in jesus name if you ask in my name you pray and you ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son do you see how jesus is claiming to be equal with the father in heaven over and over Someone needs to get some coffee. Well, keep listening while you're putting coffee for yourself, man. Don't forget to make coffee for me too, man. Right? My throat is itching. I need some coffee too. And if we continue reading, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. So Jesus will communicate with the Father in heaven and he will send another comforter that he may abide with you forever question since Ahmadi dad claimed that this is Muhammad the comforter the spirit of truth right is Muhammad with us forever guys is Muhammad immortal question is question number one is Muhammad an immortal no. So this comforter, this paraclete, Muslims listen carefully, Christians pay attention how to deal with the deception of Ahmadidat. This comforter, the paraclete, the spirit of truth, the same person, right? 
the third person of the Godhead, the third person of the triune Godhead, who is the Holy Spirit, I'm going to show it to you later, that he may abide with you forever. So if this is Muhammad, that means Muhammad is immortal, he's God himself. I need a beer, yeah. After this spanking today of Ahmadidat, merciful servant and Muhammad Hijab, I really need a beer. So even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not. Could you see Muhammad? Yes, you could. So who is the spirit of truth? It's the Holy Spirit itself, right? God himself, neither knoweth him. So you don't know him, you don't seen him, but we seen Muhammad, right? The Sahaba have seen Muhammad. But you know him, for he dwelt with you and shall be in you. Ew! Mr. Ahmadidat, if you claim that this is Muhammad, that means Muhammad is in you, Mr. Ahmadidat. Muhammad is gay and he's inside you. Ew! 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 I'm about to vomit. According to Ahmadidat, Muhammad is inside Ahmadidat. <coughs> Yuck. And then Jesus continues, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world see me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. And that they shall know that I'm in my Father, and you in me, and I'm in you. He that had my commands and keep them, he is that loved me. And he that loved me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Right? And who is that spirit of truth? Who is that comforter? Who is the paraclete? It's the Holy Spirit. Bam! It's God himself. <claps> Mr. Ahmadidad. Mr. Ahmadidad. You called the Holy Spirit. You, got, you called God himself. The Paraclete. You called that Muhammad. So according to Ahmadidad, Muhammad is God of the Holy Bible. You donkey. You donkey in... John 14, 26, that same, the spirit of truth, that same paraclete, the Greek word, the paraclete, that same comforter is God himself because God the Father, God the, the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one. The Holy Spirit himself is God. Did you see how Muhammad Hijab, sorry, uh, Ahmed Didad called Muhammad God? What did Ahmed Didad say? Let me go back. Now, we say, who is the spirit of truth? We Muslims claim Muhammad is that spirit of truth. <laughs> and we are prepared to reason with you. <laughs> he just called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. Did you see it? The spirit of truth, according to Ahmad Didad, is... Muhammad. Muhammad is God of the Holy Bible according to Ahmad Didat. Do you see guys? Do you understand why? Do you now understand why God silenced Ahmad Didat? Because when you're going to challenge God, Ahmad Didat said, and I quote, If I am lying about God, let God silence me. What did happen to Ahmad Didat? When he challenged God, God actually silenced him. When you're going to challenge God, God will deliver and God will answer. And God silenced him for his lies and deception. Silenced him for his blasphemy and shirk. You just called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. You liar, you deceiver. Shame on you, Ahmad Didad. Shame on you for lying about our holy God. Challenging our holy God. Calling Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. You liar, you deceiver, Ahmadidat, you have no honor, you have no shame, and you have no dignity. Bam. And not only that, we also prove to you that Ahmadidat lied about Muhammad. 
And Muhammad said, let anyone who will lie about me take his seat in hellfire. He called Muhammad a liar. Sound is gone? Is my sound gone, guys? Am I still be heard? Am I still be heard? Give me one, guys. Someone says sound is good. So refresh, guys. Hi, Vanessa. Welcome. Um, brother, yes. I just want to confirm uh, what you said concerning that um, imposter. Yes, Ahmed Idad, yes. Exactly. The Bible says, um, sin against uh, the Father will be forgiven, even against the Son. But sin against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven. Amen. If you, if you lie about the Holy Spirit, calling it Muhammad, you will not be forgiven by God. So Ahmadidad actually is now, unfortunately, I don't want to speak more than this ill about this dead guy, but he's actually, because he called the Holy Spirit Muhammad, he's now in burning in hellfire. And this is why he is burning in hellfire, because of being a deceiver, deceiving his Muslim audience 35 years yeah. ago. Exactly, sister. Yes, and um, for, for him to, uh, as many Muslims do, to always refer to the Bible that for them is corrupt, that shows how bankrupt they are. So what I just want to say is, if Ahmed did that claim that Jesus, he said, well, I, well, if I don't go away, yeah. The uh, comforter will not come, right? Yes. Exactly. So Jesus is sending the comforter. Yes. So that means Jesus is the master of yes. Muhammad. Yes, yes. If Jesus is the one sending him on errand, but he will always wants to place himself on the same level as Jesus, even claiming that when he dies, yeah. it will not... Uh, it will not, uh, it will rise again. Or what, what was that? It will not uh, decay. Yeah. They had to keep him for three days. Yeah. He placed exactly. himself on the same level as Jesus. But Jesus said, when I go, I will send the comforter. So Jesus sending uh, uh, Muhammad yeah. means he is his master. Yeah. Yeah. Because it okay. says, if you continue reading in verse 26, it yeah. says, but the comforter who is the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Ghost, who is God yeah. himself, if you claim that yeah. it is Muhammad, that means you are making Muhammad equal to God. You are calling Muhammad God, Mr. Ahmadidad, whom the Father will send in whose name? In my name, says Jesus. Yes. So Muhammad is sent in the name of Jesus? Wow! <laughs> wow! Mr. Ahmadidad. He shall teach yeah. you all things and bring all things to your re remembrance, whosoever I have sent unto you. So here, actually, according to this passage, Ahmadi Dad called Muhammad the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of our holy triune God. So he called Muhammad God, and not only that, Muhammad is will be sent in the name of Jesus. Who is the master yes. of Muhammad? Jesus. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. They 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 are so desperate, you know. Exactly. Bible yeah. is corrupt. Bible is corrupt. And yet they always go back to the Bible. Exactly. That is deception of the devil. Yes. And I just pray for the Muslims that they will open their eyes to see the deception. It's it's amazing. The exactly. deception is too big. Exactly. You know, Bible, Bible, you cannot trust the Bible. And they always go back to the Bible. And the Abduls mm -hmm. will not hold to say, mm -hmm. wait a minute, the Bible is corrupt. Why do you keep on going back to the Bible? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that is the spirit of the Antichrist, my brother. Exactly, I'm, I'm still holding you in my prayer. Continue, brother. Thank I pray you, that your you. voice will not cease. Yeah. Go on. Well, my Bless. voice my voice is actually gone, but we will continue. No problem. All right. Because it's Thank you. we are already live for two hours and 40 minutes. And still, oh. where's, where's Mimi Hijab? Where is Fifi? Where <laughs> are the Imams who are defending Ahmadida? Where are you? Are you Muslims not proud about Ahmadidad? That we are spanking left and right. Where are the Imams to defend, to defend Ahmadiyyad? Did you actually see Islamist peace in the live chat? How he throw Ahmadiyyad under the bus? Did you catch it, sister? He throw Ahmadiyyad. No, he said, "Go to no. other Imams." He throw he threw Ahmadiyyad under the bus. He just got rid of Ahmadiyyad. <laughs> you know, I think. I think they yeah, would yeah, go yeah. and rewrite everything. Even the, the, they need to rewrite their yeah. their Quran. Yeah. 
because everything contradicts. So I, I have the feeling that many people wrote uh, that uh, Quran and uh, the other books yeah. because otherwise I don't understand why the thing contradicts himself mm -hmm. from A to Z. <laughs> so even if they rewrite it, yeah. God is waiting for them. They yeah. can never yeah. because the spirit of the Lord is not there. Yeah. It's only where the spirit of the Lord is, yeah. there is liberty. Yeah. You understand? Thank you. God bless you, brother. Thank you, sister. Appreciate it. Uh, keep calling us. It's always a blessing to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God, God bless. bless. Bye. See you. Bye bye. So, guys, this is what happens when Ahmadida does not continue reading to know who is the spirit of truth, to know who is the paraclete, to know who is the comforter. It's God Himself. So Ahmadidat, you are a donkey and you are a deceiver. You have no shame. You have no dignity. You are a liar like your fake prophet. That's what happened when you are an agent of Satan because our Holy Bible will refute you and will show everybody that you are a liar and a deceiver. It's really not hard to refute this liar 35 years ago. It's just, you know, amazing that Muslims still are proud about Ahmadidat. It's shocking that Muslims are still using his taqiyya, his deception, over and over. I hope you are benefiting from today's live show, guys. I hope you are training yourself. I'm not doing this for me, guys. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for the sincere Muslims who are actually seeking of truth and actually are acknowledging that Ahmadidad was a liar and a deceiver. Guys, imagine, imagine, all the sources that we have in our possession claim, and we can use this as evidence that Jesus was crucified and he died on the cross. We have Matthew, we have Mark, we have Luke, we have John, we have Paul, we have Peter, we have Josephus who was an enemy of Christianity. Right? And historian from the first century, they're all from the first century. We have Clement of Rome from the seventh century. We have Ignatius from the second century. We have Polycarp, who was a church father like Ignatius from the second century. We have Tacitus, who was an enemy of Christianity. A Roman from the second century who wrote about Jesus that he died on the cross and mentioning people who were called Christians. We have Aristides of Athens from the second century. We have Justin Martyr, another church father from the second century. We have Lucian from the second century. We have Melito of Sardius from the second century. We have the Talmud, even the Talmud from the first second and third century who confirming that Jesus died on the cross. We have Marbar Serapian from the late first to the third century, etc, etc. But, but we have sources from the Islamic sources that say that Jesus wasn't crucified. From the sixth century, Muhammad didn't speak to Muhammad, uh, to, to Jesus. From the seventh century, sixth century, who didn't see Muhammad, uh, Jesus. Muhammad didn't see Jesus. Muhammad did not know Jesus. Lying about the crucifixion, denying that Jesus died on the cross. Who should we believe? All these eyewitnesses, all these historians who confirm that Jesus died on the cross, or should we believe Islam and the fake prophet and liar? False prophet of Islam. Who should we believe? Eyewitnesses or a guy from a hot desert somewhere in Arabia, miles, hundreds and hundreds of miles away from Jerusalem, lying about Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He never heard Jesus. He had no idea who Jesus was. You liar, you deceiver. All right? Let us continue this banking even more, guys. Let us continue. I hope you're enjoying today's live show, guys. I hope you're benefiting from it. Let us continue with Shabir Ali, brother. The, the same Shabir Ali who is running from Christian Prince. The same guy. Same Shabir Ali who is running from Christian Prince, debating Christian Prince. <clears throat> Man, my throat is really itching, but we will continue the spanking. We're going to spank them all, one by one. We're placing them one by one in a nice row and we'll, we are 
commanding them to bow down and get spanked. That's today's goal. Spank, spank, spank. One, one by one. Don't worry. If you are a, a fan of Shabir Ali, we're going to spank Shabir Ali too. Watch. Put on your heads, headsets, guys. Let us spank Shabir Ali. This is Shabir Ali, and I think this is his daughter. Sitting. Watch how Shabir Ali is lying about his prophet. I'm going to prove to you that Shabir Ali is a fake Muslim, calling his prophet a liar. Watch. Okay, Dr. Shabir Ali, here's a question about blasphemy. So this is a person who viewed your videos on, uh, on blasphemy and wants a little bit more clarification. The person has said that um, if he's not mistaken, the majority of classical Islamic Focus scholars with me, guys. Focus, Islamic please. In history did state a worldly punishment for blasphemy and that punishment... It's about blasphemy. Death, about blasphemy, so apostasy, um, in Islam, guys. That or, you know, explain how right. that applies now. Explain. He's yeah, going to explain I'll, it. They had reached that verdict because there is a statement in a hadith that says that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if anyone changes his religion and abandons his community, then you should okay. kill him. Uh, so they took that to mean if one leaves Islam, then that person should be killed. Yes. Uh, what I'm true. doing is I'm going back to the Quran and saying, okay, uh, you have a hadith reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said this, but uh, that may or may not be authentic. Did you hear what he just said? He just rejected Sahih al-Bukhari, brother, and many other authentic hadith. What did he say? Let me go back. Guys, for the love of God, if you respect me, if you love supporting us, you need to focus. You need to learn. Guys, when you debate, you always need to be focused and always use a headset. That's what I do. Focus to what they say and use what they say against them in the court of law. Watch what he's saying on him said this but uh, that may or may not be authentic what is more authentic is what the Quran authentic what is more authentic, hadith reported that the prophet peace be upon him said this but uh, that may or may not be authentic what is hadith reported that the prophet peace be upon him said this but uh, that may or may not be authentic he just called sahih al-bukhari not authentic did you catch it why here is why guys watch watch this is sahih al-bukhari Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6922. Guys, watch how he's lying about his prophet. What did Muhammad say if you lie about him? Muhammad said, and I quote, the prophet of Islam said, and I quote, anyone who lies about me, let him take a seat in hellfire. We're going to show you that Mr. Shabir Ali, when he's going to die, he's going to end up in hellfire burning in hellfire, he will take his seat in hellfire according to his prophet. Watch! Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6922, narrated Ikrama. Some Zandiqa, atheists, were brought to Ali and he burned them. So Ali, Ali, the cousin of Muhammad, burned those atheists, right? The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas. The, uh, also the cousin of Muhammad, right? Ali, guys, sorry, Ali married, to forgive me, Ali married Fatima, the, the so-called daughter of Khadija and Muhammad, right? Ali married Fatima, the so-called daughter of, of Khadija and Muhammad, right? So he was, uh, Muhammad was actually the uh, father-in-law of Ali, right? And Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, he heard about that Ali burned these Zanadiqa, right? He burned this Zanadiqa, the atheist. The news of this event that Ali burned them reached Ibn Abbas, who said, watch what Ibn Abbas is going to say. If I had been in the place of Ali, in his place, in Ali, I would not have burned them. So Ali burned those people, but Ibn Abbas is saying, no, no, I, he should not have burned them, right? That's wrong, as Allah's Messenger forbade it. So Muhammad forbade to burn people alive. So Ali burned people alive, but Muhammad forbade it. So is Ali actually following the Sunnah of Muhammad? You can be the judge of that. Let it go. That's not the topic that I want to go to. If we continue reading, it says, saying, 
Do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, the fire. I, says Ibn Abbas, I would have killed them because they left Islam. I would have killed them according to the statement of Allah's Messenger. What is the statement of Allah's Messenger? Whoever changes his Islamic religion, then kill him. What did Muhammad say? Whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. Did you just see how Shabir Ali lied about his prophet? What did Shabir Ali say? Let us go back. For the people who just joined or did not hear it. God and saying, okay, uh, you have a hadith reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said this, but uh, that may or may not be authentic. It's, it's not authentic. It's daif, brother. Do you see how he just, did you just witness how Shabir Ali throw his own Prophet under the bus? Denying Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, brother. It's not daif. You liar. You have no shame. You have no dignity, Shabir Ali. You just called your own prophet a liar. What did Muhammad say? Anyone who lie about me, let him take his seat in hellfire. Shabir Ali, according to your prophet, when you die, you're going to burn in hellfire, brother. Uh oh. Uh oh. He just called Muhammad a liar saying that Sahih al-Bukhari is not authentic. Anyone, anyone who is proud about Shabir Ali? Anyone? Bro, if I was a Muslim, I would have went to that show. I would have taken down that door, went inside the building, grabbed Shabir Ali by his beard, if I was a true Muslim, guys, I kid you not, I would grab him by his beard, drag him over the floor and saying, you are a fake Muslim, you are out of Islam, you just called my prophet a liar, Mr. Shabir Ali. I would use his beard, this lovely beard of his, as a broom to, to clean the floor with it. If I was truly a Muslim. He just called Muhammad a liar and he is rejecting Sahih al-Bukhari. Right? Muslims. Lying about his own prophet. Lying about Sahih al-Bukhari. Did you catch it? Now let me continue and see what this liar, this deceiver is saying more. You're already out of Islam, Mr. Shabir Ali. But let me continue spanking you. Let us continue and read and hear what he's saying. It's more authentic is what the Quran says, that is the word of God, and that founds the, forms the foundation of Islam. The Quran. And this shows that there is to be no compulsion in religion. Naturally, if you're killing people because they, they leave Islam, then you are forcing them to remain Muslims. You are practicing compulsion. Naturally, if you're there is to be no compulsion in religion. Naturally, if you're killing people because no compulsion in religion. Naturally, if you're killing people because they come. And this shows that there is to be no compulsion in religion. Naturally, if you're killing people because they, they leave Islam, then you are forcing them to remain Muslims. You are practicing compulsion. And uh, curiously enough, some of the classical commentators who... So guys, what he's basically saying is you should not kill anyone. If you leave Islam, you should not be killed. According to this liar, this deceiver. Not only, guys, not only is he lying about his own prophet, rejecting Sahih Hadith, calling his prophet a liar, this Shabir Ali. Did you catch it, guys? Is my voice not gone? Here it says it's okay. Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? If I hope you can, you still can hear me. Give me one, please. Okay, so it's you. Uh, it's you, Mr. Zero One. You need to refresh. Shabir Ali, not only is he calling his own prophet a liar, let me show you how he's, how he's calling Allah also a liar. Watch. This is Quran. Chapter 2. This is the ayah that he's referring to. This is the ayah that he's referring to. Chapter 2. Guys, take notes. Chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 256. Are you still with me, guys? This is the ayah that he's talking about. Chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, 
the chapter of the cow. Yeah, that's the chapter's name. Okay. Ayah 256. <clears throat> so he's referring to this ayah. Let there be no compulsion in religion. Right? Question. Question. If there is any truthful Muslim with us, here is the one million dollar question. Since Shabir Ali is referring to this ayah, is this ayah abrogated, yes or no? Someone is saying this verse has been abrogated, you cannot use it as a Muslim anymore. It's abrogated by Allah Himself. Let me prove to you that Shabir Ali is doing taqiyah, lying about his Prophet, lying about his Allah. Watch. This is chapter 2, ayah 256, same ayah, same chapter, do you see it? We're going to go to the tafsir of this ayah. Asbab al-Nuzul by al-Wahdi tafsir, right? This is tafsir of the Quran. This is one of the most respected sources to go to, to learn about what the Quran is actually saying in the ayahs. If we scroll down, to see what this ayah is talking about, we can read the following. Read with me, guys. Let me give you the link. This is on page two. All right. This is page two. So you have page one and page two. If we go to page two, we click on page two on that link that I just gave you. Scroll back. We can read the following. Watch. Watch how I'm going to spank Shabir Ali. Guys, take your pens out. Watch how you're going to spank Shabir Ali. This was before the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, was commanded to fight the people of the book. I see. Okay, that makes sense. This was sent before the Messenger of Allah was commanded to fight the people of the book. Where? In chapter 9. Watch. But then Allah saying, there is no compulsion in religion, right? Chapter 2, Ayah 256. There is no compulsion in religion was what? Was abrogated. And the Prophet was commanded to find the people of the book in Surah Repentance. What is Surah Repentance? That's chapter 9. Surah at tawbah So, chapter 9, guys, abrogates this ayah. This is not me, this is the tafsir for the Quran. Shabir Ali has no idea that there is no compulsion in religion. This ayah, chapter 2, ayah 256, is abrogated by chapter 9. The complete chapter 9 abrogates there is no compulsion in religion. So Shabir Ali deceived, just deceived his audience and lied about Sahih al-Bukhari calling it, it may not be authentic, so he just called it to not be authentic. While it's called authentic, Sahih means authentic. <laughs> authentic Al-Bukhari, Sahih Al-Bukhari. He just lied about Sahih Al-Bukhari, where Muhammad is saying, whoever changes Islamic religion, then kill him. So Shabir Ali, number one, he's already out of Islam, calling his prophet a liar, and he's going to burn in hellfire, according to his own prophet, and we showed you that chapter 2, ayah 256, Shabir Ali using an abrogated verse from the Quran. Bam! Uh -huh. <laughs> Shabir Ali lying about his Quran, lying about his Prophet, and lying about his Allah. Congratulations, Shabir Ali. Sabir, Sabir, Sabir Ali, Mr. Sabir Ali. You got spanked, you got served for everybody to see. Congratulations. Give him an applaud, guys. Give him an applaud. Give him an applaud. Shabir Ali, if I was a Muslim, I would, I would have gone to your house, taking you by your beard, dragging you over the floor, using you as a broom, cleaning the floor with you, with your beard. Shame on you, Shabir Ali. Shame on you, Shabir Ali, for deceiving your audience and lying about your prophet, Quran, and Allah.
Guys, and by this, we can conclude our today's live show. We spanked the most famous scholars of Islam left and right, one by one. I hope you enjoyed our today's live show. And by this, we finished our teaching. I hope there are questions, maybe calls from Muslims, maybe calls from Christians. Uh, someone called me. Let me call this gentleman back. I think he called me. Let me call this gentleman back. I think he's a Christian. Uh, hello. Hello, welcome. Uh, hello, Brother Rob. Uh, uh, hello. Thank you. You're live on air, my friend. Go ahead. Yes. I'm just going to mute the um, YouTube so I can yes, speak please. really clearly. Yes, please. Peace and blessings in Christ be with you. Um, well done for the God job you're you doing. God bless you too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, really uh, appreciate your channel. A lot of the missionaries in Speaker's Corner do um, follow you because you bring us up to date with a lot of the Islamic exegesis. And um, you did some phenomenal work today exposing Thank DDAT's so um, reactions. Uh, it's um, it's dastardly what these guys do. They have no um, self-respect. They will lie continuously. Uh, the Mohammed Jabs and the um, other clowns that we come across yes. each week in Speaker's Corner, always very vicious, very um, aggressive. Uh, but thankfully, you and Christian Prince have thoroughly sh shown this, that we as Christians can actually... Um, address them without being docile and without being um, dimmies. Exactly. Like exactly. And this is what is important. I think a lot of Christian apologists who are in the West, you should yeah. listen to your Arab Christian brothers like Rob Christian and Christian Prince. Don't be docile with the Muslims. Amen, it doesn't work. Amen. They'll take you for idiots. Um, I'm saying this because I'm from um, ancestrally from where Boko Haram is from. You I, see. Seem I see. Wow. But, yeah. So we have we we don't act soft with the uh, Muslims for the lot of Christians. My, my friend, can I have a can I ask you a question? Are you from Speaker's Corner? Yes, I, I go okay. there every week. Okay. I do videos with DC. Do you want to share your name or you want to hide it, my friend? Just to um, I will share my name. It's a brother Yakub. You can see my videos on. Guys, Soko. this is brother Yakub. For the people who don't know him, if, do you have a do you have a channel to share with the oh, brothers? Yes, I'll, I'll type it. Say down the line. I'll say hello to everyone. Yeah. I don't really post because I'll block my channel. No, uh, what's, uh, uh, let me ask you, what's your YouTube channel? What's, what is it uh, called? Um, it's the Doma Line. You see me now. I just said, I've sent Hello Rob. Okay. That's my channel. Idoma okay, Line. guys, make so, sure to subscribe to our brother here, Brother Yakub, and support his work too. Go thank ahead, you. my friend. Go ahead. Um, so, yes, um, I would say to anybody that um, look at Amadidat on his deathbed. Yes. If you feel that that is the true God, look at the torment in his eyes before he passed away. That shows you that he was ready for the judgment. And yes. this is a very, very sad thing that, you know, you cannot mock the Holy Spirit. You cannot mock God. You and cannot. Mock yeah. the judgment. Did, you, did you just watch and, and witness, my friend, how Ahmadi Dad called the Holy Spirit Muhammad? Did you watch it? Yes. Did you it, witness? It was, it, I, I watch yeah. your, all your shows. I watch every single show you do. I just felt compelled to call now. And yes, you're right. He just performed a blasphemy to send him to hell. Yeah, yeah. And blaspheming the holy spirit is unforgivable people it's mm -hmm. unforgivable sin yeah yes and thank you to all of those that have subbed my channel i do put um, things from other people's videos on mm -hmm. i hope um one of the videos that caught me out was the one you did on the sun rising um we talk about the sun setting from the quran in the muddy pool mm -hmm. but um i would like you to talk about if you do have a chance when you do your next show the yes. sun rises between the horns of satan and referring it to the Islamic symbol of the crescent moon, which is representing the horn, and yes. the star that represents the sun rising. True that story, this is a, yes. A strong pagan. I have the Hadith reference. Do you want me to post it on your channel? Or I, uh, think I, I think it's not possible, but uh, I think our brother, Phil Herrera, he can post it. I'm sure yes. he has the link. He's always yes. doing an amazing job, our dear admins. All the admins, they, yes. uh, they actually provide the links. And for the people who don't know, always when the show is over, our dear friend uh, and brother in Christ, our dear admin Phil Herrera, always post the links, the sources in the comment section. So if you want the sources that we use today, just wait 30 minutes, 45 minutes, then come back, replay the show, 
visit the comment section of this live show and you can find all the sources in the comment section. Amen to that. And God bless you. Um, Thank you so my friend. I will not take too much of your time, but I, I would like to ask your audience to please consistently, those are prayer warriors, pray for the Muslims, pray for Amen. those Amen. who evangelize against <clears throat> the satanic doctrine, because yes. we are always under a spiritual attack or True different story. Kind of, um, yeah. um, 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 how would I say, troubles, which they will try and block your channel or take away your content or whatever. They will do anything to stop the truth and the message getting out. But exactly. um, glory to God who has allowed this. Uh, Amen, my friend. Amen. God. And God bless you, Rob. In God bless you too. Thank you for this amazing call. Uh, don't hesitate to call us in the future again once more, my friend. It was a really, I really enjoyed this call. Thank you so much. Thank and thank I appreciate you. it. God bless okay. you and keep your work. Good work too, my friend. Amen to that. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was really uh, a blessing, guys, to hear this gentleman. Thank you so much. I appreciate your positive uh, words. I really appreciate it. Guys, I'm not doing this for myself, okay? We are teaching you to, to, to be trained, to be the next people out there to take the work from us, right? Christian Prince, I myself, we don't do this for ourselves. We are here to train you, to teach you how to do polemics against these agents of Satan. People like Mimi Hijab, Ali Dawa, Ahmed Didat, Shabir Ali, all these liars and deceivers, right? Learn from us, guys. And I'm replaceable. I'm a nobody. I myself need Jesus. You don't need me. But if I can teach you, so be it. Hey, Vanessa, dear sister. Welcome back. Brother Rob, I'm sorry. This is the last time I'm calling you for today. No, no, I know no, you are. no, no, no. You are my dear sister. No uh, problem. Hello. Thank you very much. I just, since uh, the Islamists are doing everything to um, fit themselves into, into the Bible, would you be able to read uh, Proverbs 20, 26, Proverbs chapter 26, from verses 24 to uh, 20, uh, 26? Mm -hmm. uh, if, they, if they're looking for where they fit in, yeah. I guess that would be the perfect, one of the perfect um, verses where they fit in. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to say. <laughs> and the other brother yeah. that says is from Boko Haram. Um, what's his name again? I need yeah, his brother, name. I brother, brother ya name. Yacoub, yeah, the, the gentleman Yacoub. who just called. Yeah, he's, yes, he said he's from the area. He's the area in Africa, right, where Boko Haram is active. So yes. this guy okay. is actually a line, you know, I really respect people who are not afraid, right, to come out yes. and say, we, are, we, we used to live among these uh, uh, criminals, right? These people who yes. are killing and destroying people yes. just in the name of Islam. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, uh, mm. uh, there, where he comes from, yeah. they kill them. They, 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 I can give you two examples. One pastor was just beheaded. Uh, one, last week, I think, or two weeks ago, was yeah. beheaded. Yeah. In that area where he comes from, another woman, the wife of a pastor, wow. they uh, told her, if you, if you do not denounce Christ, we are going to kill you. And the Amen. lady said, that Amen. is the spirit of God. He said, um, uh, let, uh, we are going to kill you. Let's see if that your Jesus will save you. Yeah. He said, she said, well, you, uh, if you kill me, I'm going to go to that Jesus because that Jesus has already saved me. Uh, wow. And they stabbed her to the point of no recogni recognition. Wow. Yeah. So I'm praying for that brother. Yeah. God bless you. So, um, you so if much. they're looking for a place yeah. where they fit in, where Muhammad fits in, yeah. Proverbs chapter 26, exactly. verses 24 to 26. Exactly. That's a perfect place for Muhammad. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you for calling. It's You're always welcome. a blessing bye -bye. to talk to you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. Do we have any Muslims, guys? Do we still have yeah. any Muslims? Thank you for calling, sister. Are there any Muslims who think they have the knowledge and the courage to call us any muslim you know when you are a follower of muhammad and his satanic man-made cult of course you're going to kill people you're trying to convert muslims by force by the swords 
or else. That's what Muhammad did, right? When Muhammad guys sent the letter to the Romans, convert or else, aslim fataslim, convert, then you will receive peace, or else, right? You know, they, they are prophet. Muhammad himself did that. So what do you think about the jihadists, right? Muhammad himself sent letters to people, to the Roman Empire, convert or else. What does else mean? Take a wild guess, right, guys? Do we have any? Uh, do we have any Muslim? I mean, not kids, but real Muslims who think they have the courage and the knowledge to debate me. Anyone? <clears throat> Uh, Peter M, I actually blocked Adam Snow because he never answered questions. He, he always call me to waste my time. I'm asking him a question. He doesn't I want to answer. Why would I want to waste my time? He's a, he's, a, he's a stupid fool who does not want to answer any question. I have no time for kids. Send me the, the real apologies, not kids. Silly kids who can't answer one question. I don't want to waste my time with children, right? We already spanked him today over and over, right? Go rewatch it. You know, I don't like to spank the same Abdul over and over. We need fresh blood. We need Imams. Where are the Ustas? Where are the Imams? Where are the so-called Muslim heroes? And guys, you... Uh, our brother uh, Yaqub from Speaker's Corner, the gentleman who just called, he mentioned Muhammad Hijab. You have seen what Muhammad Hijab said, right? Not only Ahmad Idad called Muhammad the Holy Spirit, God himself, not did Ahmad Idad blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Muhammad Hijab called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. You have heard it, right? You heard it. Let me see if I can replay that sp small part so that our friends from Speaker's Corner can use this against Muhammad Hijab, right? Let me see if I can find it again. Let's see. Where was that part? I think, yeah, this is the part. Now, let me take this call first, guys. Hello? Yes. You're live on air. Welcome. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello, Brother Rob, how are you? I'm good, welcome. Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, welcome. Go ahead, my friend. Your life on air. Yeah, um, Sister just, Vanessa just, just called just, you. just make sure, my friend, to mute YouTube because I'm hearing myself double, okay? I'm hearing myself. Make sure to mute YouTube. Only call through Skype, please. Yeah. Mute YouTube. Right. Are we okay now? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, without echo. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes, perfect. Go ahead. Go ahead, my friend. Uh huh. Like I'm just yeah, I'm just trying to confirm uh, what uh, Sister Vanessa like said. Uh, yeah, Vin a while ago. Sister. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, in my in my native country. You know where uh, the Muslims kill Christians almost every day. It has become like a ritual. Yeah. Uh, you follow like like every week, uh, a quite a number of Christians have been killed, butchered, born to life, and uh, and driven out of their homes, their lands taken. Yeah. And uh, and it's so bad that the government of the day, um, led by uh, Muslim fanatics, also um, t you know turning his back to all the gory happening, the killings, the insecurity and all that. Yeah. That wasn't like that before when a, when a Christian was a president of that, of that country. I don't want to mention the, the name of the country, but everybody knows mm -hmm. the only country in Africa that has been terrorized by Muslims where Christians are being killed mm -hmm. on a daily basis, like on a hourly basis. Mm -hmm. You follow? Yeah. So um, I, want the, I want the rest of the brethren to know that Islam means no peace. Yeah. Islam means violent. It means bloodshed. It means killing. Yeah. It means it means destruction. Yeah. So uh, nobody should lie to um, uh, Muslims in, in Western world that are, that are enjoying the beautiful life, good life, 
and uh, good atmosphere in Western world mm. or with Christians value to believe that Islam mm. means peace. Yeah. It's a total lie. Exactly. You follow? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to know what Islam really means, come to Africa. Yeah, you will see the true face Nigeria. of Islam. Exactly. Come to Sudan. <laughs> exactly. You follow? Yeah. Then, then you will know exactly what, what Islam is. Yeah. You follow? Where I came from in the northern part of Nigeria, you dare not even carry your Bible. Like you're going to church and you hold your Bible handy. Yes. You, you follow? You'll be killed instantly. Exactly. Because exactly. the life of a Christian means nothing. Yeah. Islam okay. is actually my so friend. I'm just trying to uh, like uh, confirm what yeah. Sister Vanessa said. Exactly. Exactly. Islam yeah, my that, friend, that, Islam that, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Islam doesn't Bible. mean peace, my friend. Islam means complete surrender to Allah and Muhammad. And if you don't surrender and uh, uh, to the will of Allah and Muhammad, it means convert or else. You don't want to convert to Islam, you will die. All right? Absolutely. You pay jizya, you don't pay jizya as a Christian or Jew, you will die anyway. They will take your wives as sex slaves but, and they will kill you. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know do you know in the northern Nigeria that the few Christians had to like uh, these guys change their name from Christian name to, to Muslim's name to be able to get admission into colleges? Um uh, and to be able to get jobs sometimes, you have to dress like them. Pretend you're Muslims before you can get favor. Mm -hmm. You follow? Mm -hmm. It is so bad. Yeah. So I want the rest of the listening to please remember my people back home. Yeah. Pray for African them, guys. Nigeria. Keep them in their prayers, Pray guys. Them. Pray to them. They're yeah. going through. Pray for them. Yeah. Stuff. Pray for them, yes. guys. They really need your prayers. Never ever, uh, you know, uh, think that prayers are not needed. Don't think that prayers cannot help these people. The power of prayers Absolutely. is huge, is huge. Absolutely. Keep, Absolutely. keep the admins in prayers, keep us in your prayers, keep this gentleman Absolutely. in your prayers, keep every Absolutely. people who is in need in your prayers, guys. Yeah, Amen. lastly, uh, in conclusion, I want to say that, mm. uh, you know, the beautiful testimony that we receive back home is that mm. these people lay down their life yeah. with joy, knowing that they have hope after this life. Yeah. So they, they, were, they were not really bothered. They refused to deny their faith in Christ. You follow? Yes. That's why the killing, the brutality, the hardship, they still follow Jesus to the end. Yeah. They, 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 they were ready, willingly to surrender and give up their life to the gospel. Mm -hmm. So that is a challenge to, to yeah. Christians out there. They're still having some faith, some doubt about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the hope of salvation. Yeah. You follow? Exactly. So God bless you. God, God bless you. Bless Thank everybody. you for your calling, my friend. Uh, you. Keep keep up the good work and uh, stay strong, my friend. Right? Jesus Amen. said, Jesus said, in my name you will be persecuted. They will curse you. Absolutely. They will call you names. Absolutely. But you are blessed. Right? That's Absolutely. what keeps us strong. Thank you for calling Absolutely. and God bless. Thank God you. bless you. Sir. See you. Bye bye. Amen, my friend. Amen. Well, uh, guys. Jesus already foretold that, that we're going to be persecuted in his name. So this is not new. And actually Islam has nothing to do with peace. Islam means complete surrender to the will of Allah and Muhammad. You don't surrender, they will kill you. They will take your wives as sex slaves. They will take your daughters and rape them and take them as their personal sex slaves. Especially if you don't pay jizya as a Christian or a Jew. Guys, let me play this part where Mr. Muhammad Hijab, since Brother Yaqub called me. So, Brother Yaqub, I hope you're, you are listening. Maybe you missed this part where Muhammad Hijab is calling Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. Watch. Let me go a little bit back. Watch. Humans. And these people are nothing but devil worshippers, followers of Satan, using deception to deceive as many as they can. ...are the Arabs. So the people of this prophet is going to be sent to the Arabs. Listen to this. It's mentioned also that he will be a warrior prophet. Wait a minute. What? No. Not Muhammad is the warrior prophet. <laughs> God himself is that warrior. You liar. You just called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. You called him Jehovah. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall, shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He is going to be the warrior. 
He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. So who is that warrior? It's not Muhammad. You just called Muhammad God of the Old Testament. Mr. Muhammad Hijab. You just blasphemed. You called Muhammad God of the Holy Bible. That's blasphemy. That's shirk. Muhammad Hijab, you are a mushrik. Muhammad Hijab, you, Muhammad Hijab, are a mushrik. Wow! Muhammad Hijab, wow! You called your own prophet God. Hmm. Uh-oh. Shirk alert. Blasphemy alert. Allah prays for, not to, the prophet said. The same idiot. The same idiot. Do you have any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? Who has the courage and the courage to call us live on air? Please don't send me kids. I need the ones who think they have any knowledge about Islam. The courage one, the ustaz, the imam, the sheikhs. Where are they? Why are they hiding? How many YouTube channels do you see who are allowing people to call live? Now you have the chance. We have almost 200 people watching where are you why are you hiding muslims guys <clears throat> it's we are live for three hours and 22 minutes i think many people are getting tired including myself i think today's live show was truly a blessing thank you lord for giving us this gift to expose these Muslim apologists like Ahmed Idad, like Muhammad Hijab, like Shabir Ali. All of them today, we showed everybody how easy it is to spank them left and right. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. We have the truth. This is why we can refute these liars, these deceivers. Guys, if you actually enjoyed and learned and want to rewatch it make sure to go back and rewatch today's live show also don't forget guys to subscribe smash that like button destroy it click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live we are here to share the truth and expose liars lying teachings, scam teaching, lies and deception. You Muslims cannot do anything about it. We showed everybody how easy it is to refute your heroes. Wake up Muslims. Stop following these liars and deceivers like Ahmed Idad, like Shabir Ali, like Muhammad Hijab who just called Muhammad, God of the Holy Bible, blaspheming, committing shirk, associating partners with Allah, right? And But we know you Sunni Muslims, especially you Sunni Muslims, you love to worship Muhammad. This is why you want to show everybody that God of the Holy Bible is Muhammad, right Muslims? Guys, make sure, help me to help you, download our videos. If you don't want to download and upload a complete video, just download the video, cut and copy that part that you want to share with your friends, with your audience, your, your friends on social media, Muslims on social media. Cut that part out that you want to share and re-upload it. Don't do it for me, guys. Do it for the good work. Do it to help those poor victims out of this man-made cult, this death cult, this sex cult of Muhammad that he created 1400 years ago. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your amazing support, for your lovely calls. I really received lovely calls today. Keep doing the good work. Thank you for your support. I appreciate your kind words. Jesus is Lord. He is our Lord and Savior. And every knee will bow and proclaim that He is Lord, including your knees, Muslims. Please come back home to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Guys, thank you for watching. I love you all. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is a false prophet. And Islam is a man-made cult. Thank you for watching. Lord willing, we will see each other again in a future live show. God bless.